Welcome to Roll For It. Welcome to the incredible cast that's here in front of me. Here, let me pull out my uh, my nice things I was supposed to say about you guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. gotta write, he's got to write them down. I, I, you can't pull those out of your brain? You don't just have those <laughs> off the top of your head? There. Ready you had to, you no, had to hire just... someone to write them for him. Yeah, I had to outsource this job. Well, of course. You know how it is, you know. Um... <laughs> Um, but I am actually opening up my uh, game master <laughs> seriously. program. <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> because I decided to pee for the last two minutes instead of do this. I, I'm sorry about that. I should have better managed Terrible. my time. Holy shit. I just started reading them and wet yourself, you know? Just... <laughs> yeah. Priorities. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves and your characters real quick? Say hey to the folks at home. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name's Amy, and I play the Dragonborn ha Barbarian Havilar, who likes kicking butts and more kicking butts. And hey, um, everyone. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, go. You go. Oh, you go. Okay. After you. After you. I'm, I'm Kyle. I play the Halfling Bard Mumps, who likes taking names and more taking names. <laughs> Was the continuation of that joke. Hi and hi everyone, I'm Sean, um, playing Vesenir Valinair, leader of the Valinair Knights of Valor, and I'm leading, and leading? Is that is that what we were doing, gang? I'm not really sure I caught on. Uh... That was pretty close. I think right. that was pretty right. close. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. I uh, try, to be a, try to be the team spirit when I can, you know, as, as mm -hmm. the leader, I need to encourage uh, cooperation in my group, yes. naturally. Yeah. Now you're getting it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm uh, Jake. I'm the Dungeon Master. And um, today I'll be mostly bad people, I feel like, is, is who I'll be portraying. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a mixed bag today. We'll see how it goes. Um, okay. Camera movement. All right. We're good. We're good. All right. Welcome, Dynamic. everybody. Thank you guys for your beautiful intros. They were really good. Fantastic. Oh, thank you for the subscribe. We got some follows coming in. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to so Roll nice. For It. Uh, Roll For It started as a D&D &D podcast. Each episode, the cast rolled a D100 to decide which monster on our list they'd be encountering. I heard the party yeah sound, which means somebody else gave us a follow. Thank you, Jeep Guy 97 uh, I love Jeeps. I love Jeeps. Uh, Jeeps are great. Party, yeah. So the episodes on our podcast are all less than an hour. They've got music and sound effects, and you can listen to those now anywhere you listen to podcasts. Well, not right now. We're live. Well, yeah, you, that's you probably true. Not should right wait now. till after. Yeah, just for the purpose of <laughs> just leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, but no. You, but you can. I'm saying you can listen to them now. Not that you should. Yeah, got it. Got uh, it. Wherever you listen to podcasts, and you should if you want to get the full story up to now. Each of our first three seasons in the podcast introduced us to a new trio of adventurers. Today, we are continuing the story of the Valor Knights of Season 1, live. I'm Jake the Dungeon Master, welcoming back Amy and Kyle and our special guest and D&D extraordinaire, Sean. Can each of you tell us one fun fact about a party member other than yourself before we begin? And it can be a character or a person and it can be true or false it doesn't it doesn't matter it just has to be fun <laughs> and even that even that is a stretch <laughs> that it has to be fun yeah it could be not fun fun is also just just a maybe i'll start for example um amy oh, yeah. has never actually killed a human being outside of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a, it's a weird thing yeah, because we always right, give her right. crap about that. It doesn't have to that. be true then. Got it. Okay. It's like, that's... You know, you, can you prove that? Wait a <laughs> minute. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Do you get in trouble for saying are, while being I'm recorded sorry. that you killed somebody? Uh, I don't know. I didn't say that. I, I know. I know you sure, didn't. I know. Pretty you sure didn't. we have 
Twitch viewer confidentiality. I'm on, saying so. hypothetically. What happens on Roll4? Twitch viewer. Yeah, yeah. Roll4. I'm pretty sure, actually, nobody can see this outside of anyone who's just watching it right now, and then it disappears forever? Is that how it yeah. works? Yeah. No. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and they Damn. die in seven days, something like that, right? Create her. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll let's see. My fun fact is that <clears throat> oh, this is a true fact actually, <laughs> and it'll be about Jake. Uh, one time, Jake Jake's dream is to hold a wild baby squirrel. <laughs> He's like, is it? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah it is. I feel like I just one never time... told that to anybody, mm. so I didn't know how you how you found that information. Uh, that was very you... private. Didn't you tell me? I held a wild baby squirrel one time, and then you messaged me that because oh. I posted it on the internet. Wow. And, you know, that's a true fact. Wow. Wow. I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? It could be about the character or, or the person. Yeah. Or just, or just the person. Okay. Yes. Um. Well, I know that Mumps uh, companion Durbin, um, you know, Mumps is 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 Durbin's uh, probably second longest friend. Isn't that isn't that just so wonderful? That <laughs> you know, it's so great for for Mumps and Durbin just have this really good long relationship. Yeah, hmm. the, the, the second longest definitely. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You know, well, uh, well, well, I do know one Mumps thing about is not that long. <laughs> True, Mumps is not that old. So I guess yeah, yeah, but uh, not Vezinir as the leader and morale raiser of the group uh i happen to know that they've been hiding these uh what might you call like moon pom-poms under the armor under that fancy <laughs> valinair new roby things Who told you they're just waiting for the right moment to break <laughs> them out give a good cheer you know that time just hasn't been right yet but they'll find it we'll see if it's it comes out in this episode I was I was I was cheer captain in a, in a lunar high school. My lunar in Luna high school. Fight for the position. <laughs> the female the dominated dominated profession. You know, it's it's difficult to be. You know, you you understand. It's 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 quite a challenging to be the minority in your uh in your field. It's it's uh. Indeed. Oh really? Yeah. I'm just in a, <laughs> it's a palace to... palace for the elves, and I'm half like no, I know I don't know anything about what that might be like. No. Valinor would start like I mean, uh, Vesnir would start like, like mansplaining something. <laughs> okay. I guess. All right, it's time <laughs> to find out what happened last time. And roll for it. Oh wait, this is last last time. I need new last time. <laughs> Previously, the other last time. like the little. The newly appointed Valor Knights combined all of their low to average intelligence to investigate <laughs> the mysterious fifth tower of Castle Viahara. It's true. We're all so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we have they, a... oh, they're smart. Smart's enough. They used ways. one of its many portals to travel toward an entrance to the Feywild, supposedly one of only three that are still working. After getting from info from Mr. Tree, they reached Silverlight, where Vesenir's family of Moonsiders had been camped out, uh, to find that in the last two weeks, an evil, opportunistic, rich dude named Lex Highmore from nearby Tribor City had constructed a settlement to tax those seeking access to the portal or those seeking refuge from the mysterious evil on the other side of it. The gang split up. Mump Mumps suggested... Sorry... Mumps suggested his way into camp and won some gold playing cards with his new soldier friends before boss man Lex himself busted up the fun and sent Mumps with a heavily armed escort to the bathroom to take a fake poo. <laughs> in the meantime, Vess and Havilar found many of Vess's people hiding out in the forest. They decided to strike back at the camp hoping to free those unjustly imprisoned, including Vess's mother, the leader of his people, and hopefully to defeat Lex and disperse this evil settlement altogether. While Vesenir leads the stealthy Asara and super stealthy sprite named Croak on a cover covert rescue mission, Havilar leads a group of 40 capable Moonsider elves 
in a direct assault on the highest towers overlooking the rest of the camp. And Mumps sits alone in an outhouse, plotting his <laughs> escape from the armored meanies. <laughs> yes. 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 And I believe that brings us to the present. Move this thing right there. Move this thing right here. All right. So, Havilar, we're going to start with you. No, we're not. Vesanir, we're going to start with you. All right. It's time for the stealth mission. Sarah Croak, are you ready? Let's do this. Party! Um, your squad is up first. You need to sneak to the edge of the forest over a steep drop-off point down into the rest of the camp. And from this vantage point, you can see the many towers surrounding Lake Silverlight below. One such tower stands at the bottom of the ridge between you and the prison structure. Uh, its height raises two guards to about eye level for those of you on the ridge. One of the guards holds a spyglass, scanning the horizon in a wide circle, and the other looks to the sky and points. That one looks kind of like a toad. <laughs> Construction continues on this tower as two builders work to fill in the wood walls on the lower section from a nearby lumber pile. You also hear a booming voice call out from somewhere in the camp, and it says, Western Wall! You should have 12 more feet by now. Fred, to my office at sundown. Uh-oh. And you can That's see that, that, yeah, you can see that Lex Highmore is uh, standing on his balcony a far way away, and he has a little megaphone thing that's magically just carrying his voice in the whole camp. And everybody just jumps when they hear his voice come out of nowhere. <laughs> All right, well, that will certainly prove a... Uh useful distraction um i know that croak is quite stealthy the would stealthiest. i be able to gauge how asara or stealthy asara is i still have um do i still have i guess my other question is do i still have um my spell on me uh pass without trace it lasts for an hour uh at this point after meeting up with all the rest of the elves that will have faded okay so then i i, I think it'll be worth casting it again on my team since we are Sure. Doing the stealth thing. So. And you can do so. And yeah, Croak can literally turn invisible pretty much at will, but he'll benefit from invisibility plus your plus 10 more from the spell. All right. Uh, so and Asara, you know, Asara has trained alongside the elves as an archer, so she's among the stealthiest beings that exist. But yeah, that's excellent. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to cast past without trace using my last second level spell slot, and now we are all plus ten stealthier. Okay. So if everyone's ready, I guess we'll uh, take advantage of the shouting and from the uh, from that strange device and uh, try to find a way, I guess, around the guy with the spyglass. Sure. Um, let's go ahead and make stealth checks. Do you want to roll for? Anybody on your team, or do you want maybe Havilar and Mumps to roll? Oh, yeah, let's have Havilar and Mumps roll for uh, for Asara and Croak. Oh. Kyle, you're Croak. Okie dokie. Croaky. But wait, not with my stats, though. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> God, the, no. I mean, D20. no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> clunk, clunk, <13. laughs> And I rolled a 17. And then plus the 10. Plus 10 and plus a Aww. bit more. So Sneaky I think that levels. puts all of you over 20. Um, I got a 31. Okay. So let me just roll and see if the guards are going to hit 31 on their, uh, on their little... <laughs> hmm. Oh, no. I got a new die, and it doesn't fit in my thingy. Aww. <laughs> I hate it when it doesn't fit in the thing. The I know. Okay. All right. So you guys basically scampered down the, not really a cliff, but the incline towards the ground level. 
Is that right? Yep. And you do it very quietly. Croak has flicked off his uh, his light. He has turned completely invisible. And he flies down alongside you. You hear just the f faintest little flutter of wings near you from time to time comes a little bit closer to one ear then you can't hear it and then it comes a little closer to the other ear croak is on the move all right <clears throat> best ears um appreciating the the constant uh, uh communication to where he is sean would hate it but that's okay best ear is very comfortable <laughs> with this oh a drawing i have a wee little Ooh. drawing of the camp you guys have just kind of come down here, and there's a tower right here-ish that's not drawn. Where am I pooping? That's the one that's <laughs> in construction. <laughs> Mumps, is, <laughs> Mumps is pooping over here by Ooh. towards the gate area, which that's this gate nice is closed. Game. I love to poop there. It's a nice view. Yeah, it's very calming. Hey, where am I? <laughs> Havilar. You're in the in this forest, and this is the wall that's basically your target. It's got two towers, though, not one. I got gotcha. you. Right. I guess if we want to go like, if you want to go like full battle map, I've got that ready too because Whoa. Ooh, I thought this was an efficient that. use of my time. Mm, ready to go. Yeah. So there's Vesenir. That's the oh, tower. Okay. That's the tower that you're near. You're over here somewhere. I'm right there. <laughs> Technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're approaching that tower. You're being very quiet. As you get a little bit closer, you see, yeah, so there's two builders down there and the two guards at the peak. So what do you do next? Um, you also know, because Croak filled you in, the prison building is basically the next thing on the other end of the tower and that there are two entrances. Uh, there's a smaller entrance that's just guarded by one person and just a single locked door. And then there's a large double gate towards the front that's guarded by multiples. And there's also inside this prison structure, which is a big tent-ish thing, uh, temporary structure, because most of this camp has been built in a week. Um, there's a heavier cage toward the back that, ho that houses most of your people that have been captured. So towards the back, like the back entrance, that would- uh, Yeah, the furthest away from the main entrance. And yes. uh, Croak said he had three of his insta-sleep. Oh yeah, Croak has three basically tranquilizer darts. Um, he's, Croak by the way, guys, he's a sprite. He's three to four inches tall and he's fully armed with, you know, a one inch tall longbow. And uh, he's been readying three poison arrows to put anybody down if they need, if they need to be put down. All right, so. For a nap. I definitely want to, because like those two guys, I'm kind of trying to size them up. Like how easily could one of us or three of us take two of them out? Would it be like a quick thing? Could we like quickly, you know, make them unconscious or would it be like a drawn out fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you watch them now, now that you're underneath the height of the tower, they definitely haven't spotted you. You can't even really see the one that's sitting and looking at the clouds from down here. You just <laughs> see like the spyglass going, uh, mostly focusing on further away areas. But there are towers just like this spread all over the place. So really, it's just a matter of just a matter of time before something. Something spots you somewhere. So I want to get to that back entrance, and I would I be able to get there without being spotted by those guys? Um, uh, it's unclear, okay. it, but you seem like they're completely. There's also, as you look that way, that that back entrance. There's one guard specifically right in front of it, and there's a group of three guards that just turns the corner and starts basically pacing around the entire building. So if you time it properly, uh, they'll be on the other side of the building when you make your move. All right, I'm gonna try and time that properly and sneak my way, and my my team sneaks their way over to the uh, to the back entrance where I have um, Crow kind of instruct him to 
dart that guy when we get close. Okay. So for now, I'm going to let you keep those same um, stealth checks because you're still just as magically stealthy. Yeah, so this Pass Without a Trace spell, it almost cloaks all of you in this mist as you walk. Um, a mist that matches the mist of the Silverlight Lake, which is only probably about 50 feet away from you all now as you advance towards the prison. Um, the mist has mostly cleared out, but around the lake there's just like a foot or two of this rolling magical haze that reaches out past the water and you two who are visible are staying so close to the ground that it's almost like you're moving as a part of this haze and the magic helps you to mask that fact even further you manage to get 10 feet from this guy who's standing at the back entrance uh, without him even looking at you like he's glossed over you and glossed back uh, but closer than this you'll be noticed all right so i give the signal to croak to uh dart him okay and you guys see what is the signal to croak to dart him? <laughs> probably just like a <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see yeah i don't yeah yeah i think that's that would be yeah. i think that matches vesineer's personality sounds good <laughs> Uh, Vesineer makes that symbol, but is not sure if uh, if Croak is looking at him because Croak is invisible. Uh, so you make it again, and then you hear just a tiny little, <laughs> and you see uh, Croak is basically standing on the like chest plate armor of this guard, <laughs> and he has just launched an arrow underneath his helmet into the bottom of his neck, uh, and the guard goes like this and then scratches at his neck and then falls over onto the ground. Uh, All right, I want to which... drag him into like the entrance of the that entrance if I can if it's unlocked. Okay, it is not unlocked, but oh. there is a little bit of noise that that the guard makes from falling in his uh, chain and plate armor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. So the door doesn't budge and you've got probably 20 seconds before somebody turns the corner and the of the guards that have moved. I'm going to cast Mold Earth and target a loose area. I can instantly excavate it, move it along the ground, deposit up to five feet away. So can I make like a mound? Like I don't want to like suffocate him, but like enough to like cover his body. Because if it's just like, if there's a bunch of construction everywhere, I imagine there's like mounds of dirt everywhere. Sure, you want to you want to bury this dude? I mean, if I I don't know if he tries to leave no. like some kind of reed. I don't want to I don't want to suffocate him. You want to leave his nose? <laughs> yeah, like his, his nose, nose is poking out like a little. Yeah, like his little. Like yeah. Oh yeah. He'll be asleep. Hopefully, for three he's got hours. a big nose so he can breathe. <laughs> Vassenier sticks like a little reed somewhere. Yeah. So can... <laughs> okay, so that happens. Basically, you uh, dig this grave for this freaking guy. <laughs> oh God, what have I done? Leaving his nose for my people. just above, for my people. and there's like a, a piece of a leaf right on top of it to disguise it. <laughs> um, it reminds me of like a scene from The Hangover, one of the Hangover movies that I can't really, I don't remember it well enough to bring it up, so I'm not going to mention it, and we can proceed. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. Yes. So I'm glad you didn't mention it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it really would have been... derailed the whole momentum of this <laughs> invasion plan. Yeah, truly. <laughs> All right. Um, All so right. you still you've done that now, and you've got about ten seconds left. According to Croak, is like you've got t minus ten seconds to cross <laughs> that. Uh, Damn it, Croak! <laughs> the round dude. Um, I'm going frosty, and he and he vanishes yeah. back into invisible. You lose track of him. Yep. That, that sounds like him. I'm going to... Um... Uh, the door is, is padlocked, closed. Otherwise, it's kind of like a, a wood but metal reinforced door attached to a heavy wooden frame. Okay. So there's no way I can like use some kind of... <laughs> I don't have anything on me sticks to lockpick this thing, can I? Okay, hold on. I can turn into something. 
Um, oh, but what about uh, uh, Asara? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you and Asara are basically back against the prison wall at this point. Um, just staying does, hidden. Does Asara have low. any have any skills in, <laughs> in yeah. block picking? Yeah, uh, Asara says, move. And she <laughs> steps in front of you. There you go. She pulls out a small knife my with girl. a couple of different thingies. A little switchy, knifey thingy. Swiss Army knife, like that. Except there you go. Older than that. Um, and she starts jabbing at the lock. Let's see how she does. Go, so, go, so, you got this. I'll have... Um, why doesn't Amy roll for that? Because Amy rolled the stealth yeah, check. Yeah. I use the same dice. All right. I had a pretty decent roll last time. <gasps> it's a nat 20! <gasps> Woo! Let's go! <laughs> she hardly oh. touches the lock with it, and then you hear, just hear the... A click and it opens. Uh, she looks a little bit surprised, even. Bastion <laughs> she... is oblivious to her surprise and just looks proudly at his friend. She picks companion. it up. The door swings open very quietly. Uh, do you guys enter? Yep, slip inside. Okay. You enter. You hear a little flutter as the invisible croak gets in behind you and you close the door close back. The door. All right. Uh, Asara replaces the lock but doesn't actually latch it. So that it looks like it's. Sorry, no, no, don't, closed. don't actually latch it. No, sorry, wait, no. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> All right, you guys are inside a room now. Um, there's a pretty tall ceiling in this prison tent thingy, um, which I've drawn oh. very poorly. <laughs> Excited more drawings. No, it's the save drawing. It's just this super detailed uh, here, picture of that. That's the prison thingy. It's oh, one yes. of those long yeah. round, long round buildings. Much more, much more visual in my mind now. I can picture it. So but. in there, supporting the roof, now that you're just in that little side door, are these beams. Um, four beams down, four by two. So four beams down and two wide towards yeah. the grand entrance of this place. I'll, I'll call it. Um, on your left, when you first come in this little door, are the main cells, the most fortified of the cells. And they are just hardwood. Uh, some of them have iron bars coming down, but the frames are sturdy wood. Okay. With, like, the, I don't know how construction works, but with, like, the little metally corner things. Uh, probably can't burn them works. down. That yeah. Would, that would, that would work they make it look well. pretty tough. Okay. Uh, there's also there's a bunch of prisoners in this area that are chained, that are seated on the ground and their hands are chained up onto the the poles, the support beams behind them. All right, so, I have a Sara go and um, see if she can unlock up, un, pick and the there lock are of also the people who are. Oh, sorry. Two guards. Oh, uh, it's two guards. Well then, okay. We're well, walking then. between among these. Uh, one of which <laughs> is towards the grand entrance uh, walking among the prisoners and the other seems to be right now right above you uh at the cage to your left because there is a two stories of this uh, ah. cage okay well then i have i signaled to croak to the first one on the first floor and then secondly just the one on the second floor but you know in that order okay going cold now <laughs> <laughs> i like croak um no sooner do you do that than you just hear like a clink clink and like a like a, a couple of for the prisoners sort of gasp as the guard falls and the guard that's up the stairs looks over and says, Hey, Steve, what are you doing? <laughs> and he starts walking down the stairs. Told you to stop drinking on the job. Sorry. That's not my job. Sorry. <laughs> All right, nobody touch him. What the hell, Steve? And he's walking. He takes two steps down the stairs and then just falls just crumples over <laughs> plank plank clink clink lands at the bottom no way to do <laughs> loudly but those two are asleep and now everybody in here starts to kind of uh like murmur and uh some people can't really control their excitement i don't know about excitement but uh anxiety of wild what's going screaming on. no yeah not screaming but <laughs> Getting louder, getting louder. Uh, what's going on? We should do something. We shouldn't do something. Shut up, etc. Um, I try to use my commanding royal voice to uh, quietly and deftly calm the people. How do you do that? 
Um, now let me let me let me pause and ask a quick Sean question. Are these all Valinaires, or is this like people that? So I guess it's all my people, right? It's a mixture. It's definitely okay. a mixture. Uh, about twenty of the Moonsiders are here, according to what your what your uh, people told you. But there is probably close to forty five people here. Um, Croak was saying that others who have passed through the portal coming out and can't pay the toll are imprisoned here until somebody else everybody who comes out now they're like you want to pay any of these people's tolls you know anybody you can pay extra if you got, got it. it okay and for the most so part then, they haven't been able to do so i suppose then i'll leave valinir out of it and say something to the effect of um there's no need to fear the valinir knights of valor are here to say, to, 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 to um, rescue you guys um if we all stay calm we can help each other through this and i start having um Cro uh, I mean, Asara, um, unlock the ones that are um, chained while I try to find a way. Is there a way I can either cut through or flame through some of the wooden um, Yeah, so, so I think you'll be able to deal some damage with, with, yeah, with your weapons. It won't be quiet, but um, at least the lower level wooden frames, who yeah. you recognize a lot of the Moonsider druids in there, you should be able to start hacking away at. Um, but this too, this is a padlock similar to the one that was just outside that front Oh, door. okay. Well, then I'll have Asara do that then. Never mind. Okay. So Asara has, is just about to free free one group of people from the, <laughs> no. the post. And then you're like, wait, come here. And no, she runs. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She gets two people out <laughs> and then you uh, tell her to work on the druid lock and she comes over to that one. Uh, Havilar, can you pick at that lock for us as Asara? And in the meantime, Vess, now that you've gotten a look around, you spot your mother and one other, the the second oldest, basically, in your uh, clan, are, are upstairs in that. the second level cage. Okay. Uh, just the two of them. And it's a smaller cage. It's, or it's not super small, but it's probably about eight feet by eight feet in every direction. And it's uh, like a shiny platinum metal. And the other thing that you notice is, hmm, oh, you know what I needed to do and I missed it? Uh, you need to make a, I want to say a performance check to, to see how well you did at calming Oh, okay. the people. I was going to say, yeah, okay, let's, let's do it. Fascinating is not good at this. Uh-oh. All right. That's a two. That's okay. A two. <laughs> Yeah, Rasnir is good at talking to people. Yeah. You know how good he is at talking to people, guys. Does Vess have a little bit of stage fright? You know what? Yeah, I feel like it's, it's been a while, you know? He's in front of his people. You know, in, in, out of his element, he was kind of like, yeah, I'm an elf. But now he's like, ah, oh, that's these people I've been, I need to prove yeah. myself to. And just, he's kind of in a bind right now. He's not, you know, I mean, he's trying to believe in himself. But uh, perhaps the lack of confidence is coming through his voice. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, as you see new faces for i mean i don't think you guys see a ton of new faces um in your in your group yeah i mean at i just got like once. two new faces and now i'm like confronted yeah. with all these other, oh this is this is just too much okay so it doesn't seem to be going well as people start murmuring over you you're still doing the same actions right is isara is still yeah. trying to undo these people then trying to and at this point you're issuing orders not in a whisper but at like a now get this one, get this one. Like you have to yeah, carry okay. your voice further. Essenir's not good with change. All right. And you guys hear a clank from the grand entrance oh, no. as the two doors slide apart <gasps> and two guards on either side and two larger head-to-toe plate guards walk in quickly and look around at what's going on. And they spot... Well, they spot two prisoners basically standing in the middle, and they spot some people trying to breach the doors at the. All right, I'm gonna try room. and use entangle on them. Okay. Try and kind of trap them there, and hopefully we can take him up on them. Okay. And also because Havla knows that the signal is 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 the sound of of action, so she knows this uh -huh. is the time to 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 join us. <laughs> well. <laughs> the signal actually is the bird call that oh, you that's right. showed it was her the bird before. Call. I forgot about it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think Vesenir would remember that. I think 
Yeah. And to be fair, Havilar would hear the sound of action and also take that as a signal. <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> action is also. I think Messier is like, you know what? I bet Havilar's already forgotten the signal. Let's go digital charge. Oh, they're fighting. <laughs> All right. You can smell the blood like a shark. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. let's just say for now, uh, we'll do the entangle in a moment. So these four enter uh, the two largest ones. They pull out great swords and they say, intruders. And they rush forward as these vines and leaves start to grasp up from the ground to entangle them. And uh, Vestineer, at the same time as she's casting this, she takes a hand out and she makes her bird call to the sky. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Vestineer makes his bird call to the sky and it, it almost magically just is a loud echoing bird cry uh, from the center of camp. But not not magically in like a subtle way, subtle magically way. And Has Havilar, my mom seen me down there or have I just seen her? Yeah. Um, at this point, your mother would definitely have seen you and she uh, like... I hope she, she kind of is inspired, like like you know, like I'm, we're here to save you with the bird calls, like you know, the call yeah. of destiny. For sure, and she like thumbs ups you, and you see her mouth moving, but you can't hear it. So whatever it is up there, it looks like it's just bars and air, uh, but her voice is not passing through. Mm, magic, magic. All right, magic. Havilar, you've just heard the call. Um, Kelsey's brought me a cookie. Everybody, Aww. wait five minutes. We'll continue after. <laughs> it's cookie time. It's Kelsey's cookie time. Havilar, you and 40 troops stand in two lines, melee up front, archers in the rear, waiting just out of sight to charge the ridge wall that overlooks the rest of the camp. You listen intently for some kind of signal from your druid acquaintance. And you hear one. Uh, Vess, make a make a bird call. <laughs> <laughs> Vess is also a little bit sick. <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was it. So this wall is wood, right? Mm-hmm. I want, and and I'm I'm near that section where it's a tower and a tower and a wall. Right. Yes, exactly. I would like the archers. Well, do I get to pick what they do? Mm -hmm. Did I give them, you know, their um, yeah orders? Cool. I want the archers to to all shoot fire arrows at the wall and try to burn it down. Okay. Is that a thing we can do? Very distracting. Very nice, have a look. Yeah, yeah. So, tower, tower, wall in the center, and yeah, you've had time to prepare this, so. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody in the party, in their supplies, had oil and whatever else is needed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make this plan, put this plan into place. And uh, the other thing I'll say, so as you start to approach now within your about to be spotted territory, I'll have you make a perception check so you can really get a read on what you're looking at. Ooh, that's a 21. Very nice. Okay. So, um, the wall ahead, it's 10 feet high and basically thick, thick tree, trees lined up and pointed at the top. So, a bunch of spikes uh, 10 feet off the ground. And the towers extend to about probably 12 feet at the lowest part of the tower and uh, 15, 16 no, I guess it's got to be taller than that. Uh, 20 feet at the top so that there's... You see that there's two guards in either tower right now um, covered by the half wall that comes up, which is like their cover wall. So a little bit hard to to hit, but right now they're not in like battle position, so not yet. And as you approach, yes, you, you fire. You tell your archers to fire. Is it time? To fire fire? Yes. And it's and so the archers are going to fire the fire mm -hmm. and try to light up the wall. If the wall lights up, I want to wait for people to come and try to put out the wall, and then we will charge and kill them. Okay. So you try and stay in the cover of the trees, 
as yes. the archers uh, begin their assault, trying to set the wall ablaze. Um, as you do so, it's noticed very quickly, uh, flaming arrows coming from the forest, and the people in the towers cry out, We're under attack! Ding, 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 ding. Bells ring out from both towers. Uh, you see some more people start to appear in the tower, and now they're they're kind of just peeking over the top, and they're pointing crossbows, looking at little targets to strike at from within the trees. The elves are really good at keeping to the trees and cover, but some arrows start to return uh, and hit into the trees near you. A few of them whiz past you, Havelar, as you're getting a look at the at the wall. And let's have you make, let's have you just roll a d20, and this is just kind of your flaming arrow effectiveness and you can roll two because can't... there's a lot of people okay, yes. advantage. Yeah. Lovely, and we had time to plan. Yeah, for sure. One's in that 20. Okay. Let's go! All right. So they're targeting specific, you know, areas where the wood is bound together for kindling to light up and this wall is in flames, uh, flames that reach the top and are very visible from all the way around the camp. And the bells that are ringing in these towers begin to echo throughout the camp as people are called to arms to defend Camp Highmore from an arrow invasion. Um, so you guys wait in the trees as more and more arrows hit into them. Now that the, now that the wall is ablaze, do the archers stop firing? And just keep to the cover. The archers mm -hmm. would would elves like how would they? Because I want them to move away from there, like maybe climb a tree, and then sure. like change position to then continue shooting at from cover, so we can run out and start fighting with swords, and then they can cover us from the trees. Sure. So maybe they'll back up from the front line until you push it forward more mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's it that's what i said mm -hmm. great yeah no <laughs> that's exactly what she said it that's, is yeah. <laughs> word for word <laughs> uh you did say that it's a great idea mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. archers retreat just enough um they're gonna start safely as they can climbing walls as arrows are coming from i think the stretch of wall in front of you is 10 probably about 50 60 feet wide tower tower and then there's a little bit more wall on either side just a little bit more uh more on the left wall than there's on the right so the fire is mostly right in the center and it's going and you guys see as troops are beginning to scramble over to the center of the wall and dump sand and dump water on it um is it time to charge you it looks like at this point there's probably about 12 to 14 guards um, between the tower and the wall area trying to put out the fire and also firing into the woods. Yeah, it's time to charge. It's time to charge. Okay. Um, you do so. So, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60. All right. So... <laughs> I'm scared. The DM okay. starts counting. That's how much damage you take. Um, <laughs> I'm fine. I've got relentless rage. Bring it on. Oh, there are you, you are you activating? Well, not yet. Okay, you charge. I'm not raged yet. I know. Okay. I was, I was right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and Havilar, I imagine, is up front. Yes. Right at the edge of the forest, as close and... as you can be to the action. Naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, what's your approach here? What are you Sorry. running for? Leroy. So, <laughs> I want to get the um, the unassuming ones first. So, the ones that aren't paying attention, who are putting out the fire. I want uh, the the group around me. Maybe I have like ten soldiers, the elite, you know, around me, and we're gonna take those ones out, while the other ones try to get the archers, and maybe. Well, I guess they wouldn't want to climb up the, like the archers. on fire wall anymore. Because the, there's archers, the bad guy archers, high more archers, are still on the wall, even though it's burning. Uh, yeah, well, the wall's burning. The Most of the blaze is right in the center. So are they retreating okay. from the fire? Like, are they leaving the wall? 
Not yet. Nobody has left the wall yet. They're they're up top. Um, there are some people. There's definitely some people on the ground level on either side of the wall because it's not like a perfect wall, right? It doesn't cover everything, and so you can tell that people are climbing the wall from the ground at the t at either tower. Uh, that's how they get on to the wall from behind. Um, and the other thing is, more people are getting on the wall to try and put it out, and there's certainly probably people splashing at it from the other side as well. But nobody's nobody's okay. in front of the wall where the arrows are coming from. Does that make sense? Okay, then I just want to find, yes. I just want to find all the people who are trying to climb the wall or put the fire out. Um, how, 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 can we run around like the whole wall since it is a standalone like situation? Yeah, you can. Um, or is that really long? <clears throat> no, this is probably about, uh, I want to say this whole area is about 80 feet and then there's another like 20 right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the whole thing, you guys are up in the forest. You can, okay. you've got twenty or so people to rush and twenty archers. So you can send people there, send people there, send people towards the middle, whatever you want to do. Okay, there's gonna be two two groups. Ten are we're all gonna go towards the middle and get those guys, and then we're gonna split off on either side and go around. All right, just How do knocking you get guys on? off. Uh, How do you well, get on I the mean, wall? To each his own. I mean, javelin for sure. I'm taking my javelin and like getting them okay on the wall or so, yeah that's what i'm gonna do and is the plan to just scale the the hard side of the wall that's what that's what i'm curious about are you trying to get to the top oh. yeah oh because the arrows the fire is on top mm. well so the fire hasn't like burnt the wall down yet you get what I yes, mean? Yes, that makes sense. It's yes. lit up, but okay, it's still in standing. That case... I don't know. It could be weak enough to like breach it, but it's still standing there. So right now it's just a flaming thing to climb. There's no stairs. Everybody has to just climb. Um, it You can't tell from this side because there's nothing on this side to get up, but it looks like people are getting up uh, towards either tower on the right and the left. Okay, then, yeah. I will... Anybody that I can see with my javelin who's climbing the wall, I want to javelin them. Okay. And then everybody else just, like, find somebody. So if they've got to start climbing up the same way that the Highmore soldiers are climbing, they just do that, like, pull them down. Okay. So, and is everybody, are we splitting? Yeah, 10 and two? 10. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So which side are you going, right or left? I'm going right. Okay. All right, so the troops attack. Um, incoming arrow fire. Havilar, you're targeted by. Oh, and I'm I raged. I raged before all of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mid mid in the middle of the word charge, you go from in control to uh, very very yes. angry. Yes. Hulking out, charge <laughs> like that. Perfect. Don't even finish the G. It's just charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a GH instead of a G. <laughs> yeah. Go. Okay, where's my guys? Okay, here we go. All right. So Havilar, you are targeted with one that whizzes past your head. Crossbow fire incoming. One is going to hit you. It's a 21 to hit. And another is a 16. Does that hit? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. you got resistance. We'll be fine. Okay. So <laughs> you take a total from the two arrows that hit you. Uh, one kind of slices through the top of your shoulder. One, you hold up your forearm and it just sticks into your forearm, into your scales, not very deep. Uh, you're going to take a total of six damage from those two shots. Uh, piercing damage. Is that, okay, okay, fine. That's already halved. Um, oh, it's already halved. Okay. Yep. Excellent. You charge forward. It only takes you the one turn to reach this tower. So at the base here, you can see. All right, and let's see how many elves get shot. <gasps> no, my baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, one of them's getting hit. Okay. Oh 
god, so something else. <laughs> so a lot of arrows incoming, a lot of uh, crossbow bolts incoming. Uh, Havlar, you see somebody in your peripheral get hit towards the chest and kind of tumble, take a tumble. Um, you hear the Ooh. impact of a couple of arrows far on your left. Yeah. Are they close enough that I can use a reaction to reduce their damage? Yeah, they are. A 3d6? Um, yeah, so while you're raging, as you scream out, Charg! Um, <laughs> and your great sword drawn, a uh, dragon spirit shh, comes out of your chest and flies forward. And uh, as people run, inspired by the battle, they're also seems a bit nervous by the by the little <laughs> little spectral dragon that's flying around. As they but should be. as you say so, how much damage are you reducing for the the one on your right? This the person nearby in your person. Nine. Okay. Are you able to do that more than once, or is it just once? It per... says as a reaction. Okay. So that. So that'll just, you'll be able to prevent it from hurting one person, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Because then your reaction is gone for the, until your next turns. However, yeah, so an arrow that's heading towards that one's chest, uh, the dragon spirit flies through it, uh, turning its course, and it basically sh just whizzes past the person's neck instead of stabbing right into its chest uh, with a little <sighs> one damage nick on its neck. And, and the elf is like, Ah, and just keeps running. <laughs> Draws two short swords out and leaps for the side of the tower where Havilar is. Uh, Havilar, at the side of the tower, you can see that to get up, there is a ladder um, just inside. There's a door into the tower where there's probably three guards uh, scrambling to get either up the ladder or block the door. So as you turn the corner, you see that there's guards coming up from the incline trying to take the place of those that are at the wall and you see two guards spears pointed outwards at the door to the tower guarding the ladder to the top does that make sense yes two guards okay. guarding the yeah. door two the guards ladder. downstairs yes. oh, in the tower uh, gotcha. because you've rounded it and you're right there huh. what's Where's next? the third one uh the third one uh, I meant like the rest of them are coming sort of up this gradual incline oh. to join the rest of the troops. Gotcha. Okay. So just the, the two camp. guards I got to worry about. Um, well, two with their yeah, spears wanna... right in your face and more in yes. the in the tower. Yes. So those two guards, I want to um, kill them. So I want <laughs> to <laughs> take my great sword and knock their uh, spears out of the way. Okay. And then come around and i can i feel like i can get one like do a swoop maneuver and get one but mm -hmm. then i don't know about the other one all right well you have extra attack so you can make them on both yeah oh that's right okay yeah so i do one and then you know try to get the other one pull the sword out swoop it around it. let's see your um roll. okay hang on i have do i have advantage Personal advance. Oh, uh, that's initiative. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, if you do a reckless attack, it, get, it gives you advantage. Oh, it's an at 20. <gasps> what? Don't need it. Okay. Third one. This this third one. Let's, I mean, this, uh, this session, let's go. And that's a great sword, right? So you're rolling 4d6 <laughs> for that? Yes. Ooh. All right, go ahead and roll your other one, too. See if that one hits. Okay. All, oh, the, all the dice at once. Oh, that's a, I mean, that's an 18, so that's a 20. Okay. Six. Easily a hit. All right. Yeah. Uh, go yeah. ahead and roll two. We'll damage the the first one on that, and then roll two more. The the D6s, I mean. Wait, okay, do yeah. you have Brutal Critical? Yes. Yes. Let's so go. So Ooh, it's going to be one so additional be weapon five damage Five D6s, die. yeah. 5d6 per 5d6 for the guy 20. you critted yeah uh, oh right 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 okay plus your barbarian your raging bonus and and your strength so bonus. 7d6 basically this like, person is not going to survive but i i am curious how much damage you're going to do anyway <laughs> we gotta find out <laughs> yeah. okay the 5d6 is 17 okay 21 I think 21. Or is it plus an additional plus three? Your, 
additional rage damage rage and your bonus, strength. Which, yeah, and I think your, that is yeah. three or so. Okay, uh, uh, so, 24. Yep. Yeah. 24. Plus so th strength. That guy's going to die however Plus. you want them to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he's dead. Um, okay, so I... <laughs> I you want to describe your yeah? Knock, go for it. Mm -hmm. I knock the um, spear. Ooh no! I like pull it out of his hand. You know what? I'm just gonna take it with my hand <laughs> out of his hand. Yeah. Sure. And then I'm going to just take my sword and go up through his head while his friend watches. Oh, oh in front of his friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do so. Um, you do so, and and his helmet is lifted off of his head with the top of your sword. And ding, 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 start spinning and I... <laughs> at the top. I turn it to face the other guy and pretend to talk to him as his friend. Ah! Like, you're next, no! my friend. You're next, little guy. Okay. <laughs> and you can roll your 2d6 Rage to damage that one. Me. Yeah. 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 I'm just um, picturing that, that other is... soldier going like, Jeremy, no! <laughs> <laughs> he was my best man at my wedding. We were gonna uh, go to Gamo next spring. <laughs> just uh, you, and me, and the wives one. and the kids. <laughs> now it's just family. the wives and the kids. Um, sixteen. All right, sixteen uh, damage. Yeah. Wow. Wait. Yeah. Nine, just... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13, 16. So as as that guy looks up in horror. Uh, drops the spears and puts both hands to his face. Uh, you remove the sword from the guy's head and uh, kill him. Yeah. Stab him through and, the chest. Uh, or just an old, like good old-fashioned stabbing through the chest. Yeah. I did. I worked my magic on the first yeah. one. You know, I got to move on. I can't be this. Yeah, your you know, your momentum is carrying you forward. So the mm -hmm. sword is in, and you you just chest bump this guard off of your sword and onto the ground. Uh, now all of a sudden you're covered in red blood on your uh, silvery scales and the three guards in there that were trying to get up the ladder start trying to get up the ladder a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, one, the one pulls off another one onto the ground and uh, climbs up in his place. Uh, that's it for your turn. So That's we're just like going to kind see. of simulate, yeah, we're going to simulate kind of the rest of what's going on. Um, as you look, you see that the other elves have reached the other side of the wall, and as they turn the corner, they're starting to fire arrows at the guards that are running up the hill to join their friends. So they're making like their own little kind of front to separate uh -huh. the wall from the downstairs. And others are making their way into the tower the same way that you did, uh, fighting their way in with short swords or spears or uh, long swords of their own. Um, and scimitars. I feel like scimitars is a is a moon cider weapon for sure. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like the cool, curvier the better, golden ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you just hear the the sounds of ting 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 battle from all directions, and you roar with rage, Glory. covered in blood. Yes. And that roar is overheard by mumps. Who... <laughs> it's been pooping this whole time. Mumps. And his butthole just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Mumps, you've been thinking about uh, what you're going to do to get out of this predicament here. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's uh, it's like uh, it's like God said back at the bakery when I hid in the bakery bathroom. He said, Mumps, he can't poop forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> to to get away from your shift. Yeah, Mumps will just kind of like <laughs> that cross stitched like on your wall, on your bathroom, on a pillow somewhere. You can't poop forever. <laughs> forever. And you start to hear the bells ding, 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 and you hear uh, the two guards uh, that are right outside your door, the big guys, basically. Um, their armor shifts as they're like, "Oh, what's going on? What is that? Do we go or do we? Do we like? Is this guy important?" I don't know. Is it just the two of them that came with me to the bathroom? It was, it was just two guys? Yeah, well, it, two of them stayed with you at the bathroom. Uh, four of them escorted you there. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to poke my head out and be like, whoa, guys, fellas, that sounds, that sounds really important. I don't know. Do you want to maybe take care of that? I wouldn't suggest it, but, you know, I'm just in here with 
my pants down. I'm I'm no threat. And I already paid the toll. So like I I got what I needed. I'm good for what I want. I just this seems really important. I think you guys might want to check that out. Not, not that I'm telling you how to do your jobs. I think you're doing a fantastic job. You haven't <laughs> made one nasty noise or weird face. One of them, this one whole of time them puts I've his hand on your head and tries to push you back into the door. <laughs> oh no. Um do you allow that to happen or do you or... Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead and like put my head back in, but like put my ear against the door. Like, okay. You hear the door closed, and you hear uh, a, a spear or javelin type thing drawn out and wiggled into the door, uh, oh, locking no. you inside. Like my personal nightmare. <laughs> so now you're in this uh, in this outhouse, and the the door doesn't seem to wiggle. You hear them run towards the commotion. Okay. So I'm alone in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, I can go ahead and yeah, because if I cast Thunder Wave, it's not like the 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 what do you call it? the outhouse can roll to save. <laughs> so if I do Thunder Wave, that hopefully the no. doors in the outhouse will just. I think right. Thunder Wave even specifically states it deals double damage to non creatures, yeah, yeah, to objects. It, it there you go. Stuff. I'll... I'll cast a first level thunder wave and just collapse that box. Just a nice little. <laughs> okay. Do you so want to? Out in the open. What What do I see? What direction am I facing? Am I on the other side of the camp there? Yeah. So I I picture a thunder wave is definitely loud. You can't really make it not loud. Uh. So instead of a a nice little opening like that, I think I feel like. The door that you're facing, which is what the the door door, yeah, yeah. that just shatters and flies outwards like uh, fifteen feet. <laughs> Splinters of wood go everywhere, the the... and you're just standing there. And then the three remaining walls fall out on either side. That's very, and very you dramatic. see you see commotion. Um, the you're nearby the area where it was kind of like the rest and relaxation area where everybody was eating lunch and whatnot. Uh, those tables, there's people scrambling in every direction as the builders try to get as far away from the fighting as possible, and most of the guards try and figure out, you know, who's going to tell them to go towards the fighting. Um, <laughs> you How many see... guards do I see in that, like, break room area? Sure. Uh, just glancing that way, you see probably five or six um, that you can spot. I mean... There's dozens of people running in every direction, but there's five or six kind of like trying to coordinate or, or take a, take charge of the builders and be like, this way, and then be like, Steve. Uh, every, there's a lot of people named Steve. Uh, get back to the... Common name, yeah. It's, it's a human village. You know, how how many names do humans have? I'm not very crazy. Oh, in there too. Humans. Yeah. Um, so about five or six taking charge in that little break area, and you also see... Uh, Mr. Lex Highmore, he's pretty close to you as well in your position in his big house. He gets back out on the balcony and he raises his little megaphone and he says, It's the elves. Grab their family. Show them uh -oh. we mean business. Uh-oh, uh-oh, all right. And he turns oh, no. towards uh, the break area and he says, You, Steve, quit being a fucking show-off and get to the prison and those five people start to run uh, towards the prison area, which is oh, past the Oh, five mansion. people. Love it. Mumps, what's up? Okay, okay. Well. Nobody has really seemed to notice you exploding out of the outhouse. Yeah. So you say <laughs> the big house with this balcony, it's about how many feet away? Oh, um, let's take a look here. We'll see at the Mumps, old graph paper. Rescue. Um... It's probably about 80 feet, 80 feet away from you. And then suddenly Durbin shows up and gives Mumps a speed bonus. <laughs> Durbin is, yeah, Durbin was left in the break room and he's just standing there, uh, probably like eating somebody's porridge that they left out <laughs> as this commotion happens in all directions. There's another thing I want to ask. One of those people from the break room yeah. is one of them, Ed. Yeah. My buddy, my pal, Ed, yeah. from before. Yep. <laughs> sure is. I would like 
Oh, who knows if this is gonna work? But I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. And you, right. you've gotten a pretty good amount of info about Ed too. You know, like yeah. a little, you know, where he's from. They go way back. Know, what his parents did, such and such. He's thinking about proposing to his girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, et cetera. You got? Did you get invited I... to the? Are you invited to the wedding? I would like <laughs> to get at least close enough to Ed to then cast suggestion a nice second level enchantment here okay. just your basic suggestion only works on one person sure and i would like to like influence ed and say hey buddy um buddy come here, come here, come here. yeah um ed ed buddy my little little, little bed head hey hey come here i just Mumps, um what are you doing out here oh it's the wildest thing this place it's going up in flames man i want to i just want to tell gotta you get clear I, here friend it's going to sh everything's Going crazy, you and <laughs> yeah. get get Durbin and get out of here. I heard that guy yelling on the balcony at you, like he was so mean to you. Why do you put up with him? That Why dude's you... got the money. That's how we money. get paid. We get paid by getting mean to bead by us. Sorry, I'm scrambling. My there's a lot going on right now, and I'm trying to get to the prison area because no, we're no, supposed yeah. to like slaughter some elves or something. It's a crazy, it's a crazy oh, no, turn thing. of events for the day because it started here's out with thing, some like... games. Yeah. He's gonna give you money to slaughter elves? That's wild. Like, do you hear what you're saying? Did you ever think to yourself, hey, maybe that's the bad guy? I just want you to know that like, there's other things to do in life. There, uh, did when you, when you were a kid and you were growing up, did you say to yourself, hey, I wanna genocide when I grow up. <laughs> the the frame of the camera is getting like closer and closer as, as Ed's attention is starting to lock onto your eyes more and more. And you're just like, I don't think talking. Lil Ed, Lil Ed thought that. I think when he grew up, he said, I want to be the best exotic Marigold Hotel I can be, is what I think at Lil Ed. And looking back, I think <laughs> Lil Ed, I think you want to make him proud. Do you feel proud right now working for that really mean guy? About to kill all these innocent little elves? No. No. And hey, you know what? I was playing cards with you guys earlier. I get that from all you guys. You know, you're such great guys. You shouldn't have to work for this monster. This jeez, wow, what a guy. Yeah. So here's here's the thing that I want to talk to you about. I think we should go over to that little house where he's alone by himself because everyone ran to the firewall. And we should just, you know, take care of business. You know? Do you well, feel me, Ed? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I mean, there's still the the four the four plate guards are still sitting by the by the entrance of the, the They're not house. buddies of yours? You don't know those guys? Are they different like troops? Oh, yeah, the, the big heavy plate guards? They're weirdos, man. They don't Ugh, yeah, I think they're the worst, right? I look at them and I just see pretentious written all over. It's all, <laughs> it's in the armor too. Like they think they're better than you. Like they really no one's do. better than you, Ed. You're the greatest. One of them punched Steve the other day for like nothing, pretty oh, much Steve? nothing. Steve? No, Steve. Oh, yeah. Steve. Ugh, Steve nice F. This guy. Steve F. Not even Steve L. Who's a tool sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Steve L. He's a cheater. I I I play cards pretty well. That that dude's a cheater. But Steve F. Come on, come on. Yeah. You yeah, know what? Man. I think, I think the guys, us and the guys, we got, we got to do something. We got to stand up for ourselves. You know, we can't, we can't let them walk all over us. We can't let the big bad wolf with all his big bags of money just walk all over us. Okay. okay. You feel me? Are you think, snorting up what I'm think, lining out? I think I, <laughs> I think I do. I think I do. It's really scary though. And look. I'm not that good of a of a fighter, to be honest with you. Like I got a C minus in my guard class. <laughs> and uh And do you know do you know what courage is? Courage is not the absence of fear. It is acting in spite of it. Now is the time to be a hero, Ed. Now and probably is a couple our other time. people have just like happened to Flag listen up <laughs> a couple of builders and a couple of guards have just been like wow he's really saying he's really saying so listen to this can i like stand on one of the builders <laughs> logs and be like 
all of you people of this outpost. How long have we stood here? He just like inserts himself in their yeah. world. How long have we <laughs> worked here and toiled under these poor conditions, <laughs> under this toxic workplace environment? And in the distance, you just hear ting, 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 ting. The fire keeps going up. The smoke keeps rising. For um, such low wages, we can yeah. barely afford our lunchtime porridge. <laughs> The porridge sucks. Yeah. I hear there's beef and steak and pork chops in the main house. And I say he's not going to hoard it anymore. All right, Mumps, you hear. Don't listen to that little shit. I'm the loudspeaker. (laughs) And the first syllable, like, makes everybody that you're talking to jump. And he says, everyone... Finish him. And then I'm going to need you to make a contesting performance check with Mr. Lex Highmore. Uh, oh, my God. Because you fight for the <laughs> souls of, of his oh, men. Man. This is Pretty the most performance, but this is still This is still a nerve-wracking role. Uh, oh, I don't know if it's going to do it. It's 17. It's 17. I got an 8. Ah, yes. So a couple of them, one of them grabs out a hand axe and raises it, and Ed takes his hand, and he says, (gasps) Stay your blade, brother. (laughs) This is our leader now. Yes. And then they say, Bumps is our leader now. (laughs) And uh, the cheer is not that loud because it's only a dozen people who are in your little uh, group here. Everybody oh, else is still just panicking and either running away or, uh, or random screams pass yeah. by. <laughs> but you've got twelve people and probably let's say it's sixteen and uh, twelve of them are guards and four of them are builders who take out pickaxes and big old hammers and they're like, "Let's get them!" And cut to <laughs> <laughs> part of me wants to go like cha. But another part wants to be a little bit better about this and be like, um, hey, um, I, I know it might be a long shot, but um, Ed, do you know if you can, do you have like a secret whistle or a big horn or anything that would signal, hey, stop fighting? Like, stop shooting those elves. Uh, not that I know of. Okay, well then, how about this? Um, can I send you, uh, no, if I send builders over, to say stop the guards won't listen to them i gotta send buddies i gotta send other guards so i can i send like two or three of the guards over to the wall to tell the other guards to stop fighting they have a new enemy now you want to send them to the like wall wall the firewall yeah where all the commotion is to tell like the guards like hey no over here as you've got most of your group riled up and you begin to tell your plan to these other two or three um we're gonna cut over to vestineer right. who uh go ahead and oh i'm making checks to see if your entangle spell is going to correct strength up checks. those guys all right the two little guys one of the little guys uh hops out of the way ducks and rolls and gets to his feet in the corner and then the two big guys um oh okay so one of them rolled the nat one so one of them uh basically lifts his foot and completely trips face first into the uh into the brush and like can't move and can't see because his face is down underneath uh the vines and thorns and the other one seeing this uh just kicks through and just splits through the vines and uh, begins to charge forward at you um let's go ahead and roll initiative in this tent real quick see all if right he gets to go first. i got a Oh, no, I got a, f- a five. That's love that. Okay. Um, all right. So here's what's going to happen next. All right. Great sword in hand. He slices through a couple of more vines that are coming at him as he charges at you. Um... <laughs> And he reaches you in time to get a nat one, and he <laughs> rears back 
his great sword and swings and the great sword falls behind him as he loses grip on it uh he turns around quickly and picks it back up and holds it like this threateningly as his turn ends all right uh, the other guard in the corner is going to fire a crossbow also at you Bess. Okay. uh it's gonna be a seven to hit so i imagine it just flings past uh, stabs into the wood above the door that you two walked in. Excellent. Uh, the other two right now are tangled, are entangled. Yeah, so they are um, currently restrained, so mm -hmm. they can still um, attack, but with disadvantage, or they can use an action to try and get out. Yeah. Okay, so the one that's on the floor, I'm gonna give him till next turn to get out uh, with his nat one. All but right. the one, the other one in the that got tangled up, he has a crossbow as well, and he's going to fire it at you. This time a 12. All right. Well, that does not... Well, let me just confirm before I say anything. That does not hit. I have a 13 armor class. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So that one's close. You have to almost um, deflect yeah, it I with... Yeah, I kind of uh, lift up one of my... Deflect it with one of my, uh, sure. my armor on my arm. My arm... Box it away. Um, that puts it at your turn, and I'll roll... We'll, we'll just have your allies go next to you. All right. Bassanir. <clears throat> with the um, entangle spell still on two people, is going to pull the feather dangling from his hair um, across his face. And as he does so, you see the feathers multiply as he turns into a giant eagle. Ooh. Oh. Ah. And um, <laughs> he's um, going to attack one of the um, people. I'll say the one that is face down. Um, since he has uh, advantage, and because uh, he says he avoids the rough, he avoids the difficult terrain that the thorns have okay. created. The the one that made it up to you, are they gonna get an opportunity attack? Um, I was wondering how close they were. I also am large, so I'm not sure how can I still like oh, be wow. within his distance while I'm attacking the other one. Uh, mm, so I think he ran like a full at least 30 feet towards you from the oh Grand god Entrance okay so they're area. that far away from me okay that's fine then i will um i think you can make it i i would just get like one swing at you with my yeah uh, my dude. i don't like the great sword idea um how i mean this is kind of a weird question but like how can i do i know how strong these guys are like how easy i could i do like just um nah, that's kind of a weird so question okay they kind of look like they resemble the full plate invisible face armor that like the mountain would have worn in uh game of thrones but you have a hunch that these aren't the mountain from game of thrones you know? <laughs> um other all than right. that i can't tell you more <laughs> no no that that's good that's that that's all i was um okay that sounds good so then why don't i go ahead the yeah. other two guards on the sides they're the regular ass guards um they have shields yeah. on their back and crossbows okay. yeah let's go ahead and um <laughs> yeah let's go ahead and attack the one I'll, I'll try to i'll go ahead and i'll take the op attack of opportunity okay so as you soar past this one it is going to sh stick ah. you right above ah. it um but it doesn't stop you in its tracks or anything you keep you keep traveling through and for only uh five damage five slashing okay. damage i can i can take that Five damage. So All a little right. bit of bird blood yep. sprays down. An eagle, a, fe a feather falls, um, and he is going to attack one of the, fall uh, the like fallen one with disadvantage. <laughs> I mean, with advantage. To the sea. Uh, <laughs> Fly like an eagle. All right, okay. so that is going to be a. Oh my god, my dice is way too shiny. A ten. And oh, that's much better. A. Oh my god, why is it so shiny? Uh, Eighteen. <laughs> Too shiny. All right, you're going to hit with that one. Go ahead and roll damn dams. All right, so the talons. Oh, no, that's the beak. That's just one attack. Awesome. Okay. Oh. All right, come on, damage. Beak attack. Uh, Damage. Here we go. Uh, 13 with the beak. Okay. Then with the talons, it's going to be a 19 to hit or a 16. So 19. 19. Okay, and damage. And the damage is going to be an 11. Okay. 
19 and 11. Is that right? You did 30 damage? You know what? Sorry. Let me re-roll the, um, the, wait, damage. Sorry. The beak damage is totally off. Um, I was, I'm still using the uh, new app. It's okay. So, a beak damage is going to be an 8. Oh, is it, is it, is it adding it automatically or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so the beak damage is going to be an 8. The talent damage is going to be the <clears throat> 11. Okay, sweet. 19 total. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, okay, I've got that listed. All right, so uh, Vestineer leaps up, uh, transforming into an eagle, uh, takes a little bit of a slash as he flies, and pounces down onto this, uh, onto this guard, which is face down in the vines, and slashes his claws and beak into the guard that guard is definitely a... bloodied now excellent i also got a 17 on my constant on my uh my uh concentration oh check right right to maintain right. my entangle awesome so the vines keep doing their work and your beak just rips into something on like the guy's back of his neck delicious yep and that's your turn All right. i'll have asara takes a turn as well uh yes. asara Amy, can you roll that lockpick check? Wow, it's just a seven. Just a seven. Um, okay, so you get halfway there. You hear a little click, and um, everybody on the other side of the cage is egging you on, and they're also going like, go vest, go vest, go vest. Fly like an eagle <laughs> to the sea. <laughs> yes, my people. One of the Song ancient of my songs. People. Yes. <laughs> the ancient the song. Let ancient my spirit song. carry Passed me. That's actually really thematic. <laughs> yeah. It really fits. The honestly. moon spirit carries me. All right. Um, I love it. Croak is going to appear on the head of the creature that you are on the back of, uh, Vess. Ooh, let's go. Let's see what can Croak do again. It's right here. Boom. Croak. He's going to say, say goodbye, motherfucker. And he's going to pull out his long sword and stab it down into the back of this creature's neck. Yes. It's an easy hit, and that means it's going to deal two damage. Yes, wait. <laughs> he pulls it out some red blood sprays over his body as he <laughs> as he leaps back up to his feet in flight and he like he like winks at you he's like we got this it's like a mini version of what's happening to Havilar on the battlefield <laughs> being sprayed with blood alright <sighs> okay so the big plate mail guard who you passed by uh, and got a swing taken out of is going to look around at what's happening uh, see uh, Asara uh, with the lockpick and go oh, no. after her. No. Um, okay, so this is going to be a hit with the great sword. Um, Asara turns right as it's incoming and moves to dodge out of the way, but it's going to take no. a little bit. Not too bad. Um, eight slashing damage. Uh, she dives, but the You've great sword catches the back of her calf, and she like now he's sort of blocking the gate the gate off from her as she's trying to like outmaneuver him to get to it. Um, the one that's on the ground now. Oh, the entangle keeps going, huh? Yeah. Okay, he's going to take his sword and slice through the vines to like free himself and get onto his back and crawl his way to his feet. And he has to get completely out of the range of Entangle, or is it going to entangle um, him No, again? he just needs to make He's another free. strength check, um, but it's not. It's only when he when you cast the spell if they're in the area. Okay. But the, so but the... the area is to consider difficult terrain, so he's a bit slower in it as well. Okay, so his strength check is 22. All right, so he gets oh, out. Oh, you, you're saying he needs to make that next turn if he stays in the area. No, 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 no. Okay, he's done. Yeah, he just needs he's to make it when he's... When, yeah, he's done. All right. And that's the guy that I attacked or the other guy? That's the guy that you attacked. He gets to okay. his feet, uh, sword drawn, covered in uh, his own blood and very angry. Um, okay. The one that's 
got the crossbow, but his legs are tangled up, is going to try and free himself and succeed, uh, okay. grabbing out a little knife and slashing through and jumping out of the way, running over towards the middle of the tent now. So he would be separating you from the rest. And the and other is he one able to reach crossbow. that despite the, um, the difficult terrain? Uh, yeah, so, so okay. he hasn't reached the back area with the fence or the prison, but Got he's it. reached the middle, just out of the little grassier area. Okay. Away from the entrance. Got it. And then a crossbow bolt's going to come at you for 15. Oof. All right, oh. let me let me take a look at that. My eagle health. Okay, so I'm still I'm still up. I am at 6 health All currently right. as an eagle, but uh 15 still flying. 15 for um attack roll, not for damage. Oh, my bad. You're good. I'll give myself 3 damage. Oh, oh that's oh, I can that's better. The, the crossbow like bolt pierces just through the, the lightest area of your wing and goes right through to the other side. Ah! Painful, probably, yeah, but you're okay. But I, once again, like I said, we've been through worse, me and Asara even. Can you speak in this form at No, this, I cannot, uh, but I, I imagine that we're sharing a, a, a kinship that we've known through battle that continues. And, you know, yeah. I look at her with my eagle eyes, and she looks back only for a moment, and then we continue with our quests are absolutely <laughs> and it's so your turn I. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah uh it's your turn eagle as you're right. over the top well then um well i don't want another attack of opportunity i suppose i should try and finish this guy off before going to help asara so i'll sure. go ahead and do two more attacks um with my eagle form uh, that's gonna be a 22 to hit nice and a five Let's damage see. with my beak. I like an eagle. All right. And then a seventeen. Still up. To a uh, dam uh, seventeen with the talons, and then nine damage. Ooh, he's not still up. So another beak. It's going to penetrate right at the top again of the collar plate of this armor, uh, the other side of his neck, and he sort of stumbles now, just barely on his feet, still trying to keep his sword pointed at you. You come by with the talons, and how do you finish the job? Ooh, it's hard for Vesnir not to want to, you know, what, the, what these people have probably done to his people. Uh, yeah, I imagine um, I'll, I'll spare him his eyes. In this case, I'll just grab his arms and just kind of rip them off his body giant and then fly over style. to where, giant eagle styles, I fly over to where Asara is trying to give her some kind of a flanking. Yeah. To the enemy. Do you keep him in hand as you fly? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of slap the guy with his own, you know, arms and, you know. <laughs> Who wouldn't sick. in that situation? This game is sick, <laughs> sickening. <laughs> Mumps yeah, is the I, most vile of all of us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vessenir's <laughs> definitely not himself when he's in all these forms, for sure. Or maybe he's his true self. Who knows? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Deep. Oh, that's something that Vess and I have in common. Because we both, you know, change, sort of, and become primal. different. Yeah. yeah. We should have a beer and Animal discuss brain. it later. <laughs> mm. Yes, one of the finest elven ales. That uh, I, I could, and you're like, oh no, I didn't mean that stuff. Oh, I God. meant like an actual beer, <laughs> a <laughs> real beer. It's, it's all right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Vest soars over, and with your movement, do you want to basically engage the other guard to free up Asara from? Definitely, his I kind of fly between them and like ah, in his face, you know, trying to to him sure. with all the bl his friend's blood that I have on my talons, <laughs> just dripping. It also drips over many of the prisoners between no! you and. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Between you and the other guard. And definitely the guard yep. in the middle of the room. They're probably used like to like that by now. <laughs> they get to go poop, man. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not get bled on bad. No, All I right. mean like, you know, the people who know Vessenir. It's like, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what he does. Oh, yeah. The Moonsiders like are all that. about it. <laughs> Murder. Probably okay. wipe it around the face a little yeah, bit. Yeah, get a little war paint going on. All right, Asara is going to use this opportunity to slip past it and try and engage this lock one more time. You got this, Asara. Let's, let's do it, Amy. It's weakened. Oh, yeah, it's and so is Asara because it's a three. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> she doesn't like the blood, the... clearly. I was really yeah. excited. Okay. <laughs> I know, you gave us hope. Um... Okay, Croak is going to um, fly over and appear on um, the guy's shoulder that you're engaging with, Vestanir. And then Asara's going to say, Cloak! Croak! Give me your sword! And he's going to stop in midair and, 
and change his mind and go over and engage with the lock. And I'll yeah. have Mumps, if you can go ahead and roll for one more attempt at this lock as Croak flies in, sword Come at the ready, lock. and dives for it. Got this, I Croak. rolled a nine. A nine, oh, nat, oh. just a flat nine? Well, d- uh, what Because I'm not Cro- adding. Are there, yeah. mul- are there any factors on your end? Any? Yeah. The tiny guy, if he could like, see you know, the lock better than... Oh, yeah. Tinkerbell. Oh, yeah. He can do stuff. Yeah. He's been around... Um, Magic croaks all sorts of illicit skills and So he stabs the lock in. You hear a little click and down. And yeah, because I, I changed that to a 15, your nine. And the lock is going to Let's drop. Let's go. And Sara knocks it out of the way and the door is open. And the druids are bound with their hands and fingers. But Sara is going to do quickly start to take off remove these and you're about to have some uh some druids in action in a moment All right. and even as you look that way vest still in eagle form so best vision ever uh you see the first the first dude that comes out is going to remove his shackles and start to transform into a bear yes and come up from behind the plate mail guy that you're fighting now and then we're gonna go back to over by havilar all right Havilar, I've skipped a turn for you that you've reached the top of the wall now um, with one more person's blood on your armor. What do you do? You're now in the top of the tower, and you see that some of the elves on the other side have done the same and reached the top of that other opposite tower with fire in the middle. Uh, is there any other? I mean, is there any other guys up here that I can murder? Or yeah, there's plenty of murderable guys. Um, <laughs> plenty more so... to go around. There's one here in the tower, and there's uh, three or four now that are sort of stuck on the wall um, between you and the fire, and two more between the other elves and the fire, um, deciding basically which direction to either flee or shoot. Uh, most of them, the a couple one of them that's still have their crossbows, to the, though. The one that's closest to the wall, can yeah. I just toss him off the side? Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a strength check. Like, uh, just your regular attack roll. You can add everything that you normally would to it. Can we get a Wilhelm okay. screamed prep? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I really should have that. That is 26. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, so uh, this one closest to the wall uh, that's still in the tower, basically pointing at you. Because some of them are cowering and others are fully engaged. So you're going for the engaged ones first the thrill of battle uh you take the spear up in your hand and shove or bump with your shoulder and he stumbles out the door of the tower and over the spiky wall and lands on the ground on the other side uh where he is shot at by the elves that are in the trees (laughs) in the tree line yes thank you thank you Kyle. you're still up you've got another attack or whatever else is needed on your turn um I'll take the next guy and uh, use my greatsword and stab him in the chest. Oh, yeah, she will. So are you Mm -hmm. running down the, um, like, on the wall now, on the wall platform? Yeah, I'm on the wall platform. I'm just planning, like, to cut through these guys before I, I don't know, figure out the next move. Sure. And that is a 21. Okay. Go ahead and roll your 2d6 for damage on that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah. 14. 14. Um, it sinks in and stabs all the way through your forward momentum. You almost hit the guy behind him, uh, but that guy is going to dive off the wall back towards the camp and duck and roll Very as nice. he hits the ground. And he goes, ah, uh-huh. fuck. And it's going to. <laughs> he starts the roll down the hill, like the comedic roll down the actual. Um, As what's it called? You oh, wish. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. Um, he'll be safe though. He'll be fine. A couple of broken ribs. The, the guy the that you stabbed is dead. Oh no, he's falling towards camp. Uh, Wait, oh, is that I see. Wesley? Wait, no, Wesley. Why you, Wesley? <laughs> <laughs> Havilar oh, recognizes his voice. Oh yeah, your guy is your guy is toast. Nice. Okay. Another uh, you're one. still up I here now. I start marking on like my face. I start making marks of all of the guys that okay, I hit great. with their blood. <laughs> Instead of a Z, yeah. you carve an, an H really quick into them with your sword. <laughs> yeah. So this is um so now you see that 
the folks from the camp have started to approach in mass, like at the top of the hill. Still, they're barely being held off to the. Here, let me try and explain it better. Um, this is the main reinforced reinforcement route. If you can see that sort of up the cliff, it's the gradual slope. And your people have mostly taken command of the actual wall. And some of your people, probably about five, are still here trying to just fire into these guys to keep them at bay. But some arrows are returning as well. So do you want We've... to yeah, make any adjustments or make any orders for your squad? Yes, because if we've taken control of the wall, then I think the archers should come out and start coming up the wall. Mm -hmm. to then... It's our wall now. It's our wall now, and it's on fire, so oops. But, you know, it's fine for now. <laughs> um, yeah, we got some So time. come up the wall and just start attacking the reinforcements. So maybe they actually just all go to that one side of the tower, and I'm Great. on the left side, and I'll take the left side. Well, yeah, so your people in the, in the towers can throw down some uh rope basically to help the archers mm -hmm. climb up get that yes. vantage point yes and so do. as you yeah you look and you see your troops approaching the wall from this side start to hop up and start to fire into this group um let's see how we do for bad guys hitting good guys here Bum -ba -dum -bum, bum -ba -dum. Bum -ba -dum -ba, bum -ba -dum, and then over there in the thing. Bum -ba -dum -bum, bum -ba -dum. Okay. Um, Havilar, you do see somebody within range of your uh, protection spell. Uh, somebody on the other he side of the it. fire is uh, approached and stabbed at with a spear and is going to be struck. Uh, nine. They reduced by nine. Ooh. Okay. So basically... The person goes to strike with the spear, and this dragon spirit clenches its teeth into the back of the spear and prevents him from even stabbing forward. And he turns. By the time he's turned, uh, the elf in front of him has slashed into the side of his yes. face. And he falls over off the wall. Um, and then, and but one elf that's sort of at that front line I was highlighting gets struck uh, near the chest area, kind of goes down, and is taken up by another one and starting to pull behind your wall the firewall to safety um sure. you're still up top now uh you can take another turn here there's two oh. more guys between you and oh. the center of the wall or there's the people at the bottom of the hill whatever you want my tossing the guy off of the side wasn't uh well wasn't technically I, it's been a whole loop Oh, this is your second okay. turn in this moment. Got you. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, then um, what are the people on the ground doing? I can't really I can't really reach the reinforcements at all. You can throw stuff at them if you want, or nah. you can uh, cannonball down there. Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> no, I'm going to I'm going to get rid of the rest of the guys. On like the wall, Sonic so... the Hedgehog, like down the <laughs> hill. Yeah. I'm gonna skip that route for now. Okay. I'm gonna hold that on the back burner, um, right. and just you know keep slashing away. At Two these more guys. attack rolls will clear the wall. Okay, one, two. Oh no! Well, one is a nat one. Okay. Got too many twenties, and okay. so let's make the first one a twenty. <laughs> Five to hit. Sure. Go ahead and roll your damage. Thirteen. Yeah. Let me check that again. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen's enough. All right. So one of them is headless, and as you go to strike at the other one, they uh, hold up a shield and you deflect off of it really hard like you hit the most the most metal part and your sword bounces you backwards and i'm gonna have you make a dexterity saving throw as you start to lose your balance and tumble not good at that one <laughs> 13 okay you're fine you 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 just catch yourself um just on the edge of the wall still nice. in vision and some of the crossbow bolts are flying by you as they see this giant form just slicing through their men on the wall 
in the meantime, as uh, that battle continues, the firewall is in Moonsider control. Uh, yes. Mumps, you have gathered the troops. Uh, so do you send some people to try and figure out, to try and stop the army from progressing? Is that still I part feel of the like plan? If I just send guards, they'll probably potentially die because Havilar yeah. would rip them in half. So I feel like I have to go <laughs> with them. You start, you start so to like say, like, yeah, group, stop your friends, and you look up and you see body parts just flying <laughs> off. I feel like as a group, all of us are like, people. we're going to stick together. We're just going to swing by. And they say, say, hey, cool it. Let's do this whole uh, regrouping thing. And then we'll go to the big house. And you hear the uh, you hear Lex on the megaphone saying, "Stop stopping when they shoot you with arrows. Just push forward, push forward through the push forward through the line and take the firewall back." Oh, you push forward your head through that window, you dick! Oh, and, <laughs> yeah, that happens. And he turns towards you, you lot, and he like throws his thing down. And he's going to, uh, so he walks into his house and slams the door behind him. And where are you heading? Uh, the whole group of us are heading over to the burning wall to try and stop the fighting before everyone dies. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so are you doing that quickly? I'd say it's a, it's a, it's, you know, yeah. it's a pretty quick shuffle. We're not just like leisurely. We're like, okay, okay, okay. Things, We're going to go stop things, this people fight. Are I hear <laughs> I hear a, I hear a big commotion. We gotta put a stop. Hi ho, hi ho. It's okay. Awkwardly. So everybody is running. Bye, um, we go. Some people have started to follow you just because you're a group to follow. Uh, they don't actually know what's in store for them necessarily, but yeah, that's the mentality. Um, and you guys are gonna run past the prison where you see a few more people are starting to enter, and then you also see all of a sudden busting out. The sides of the prison are bears and tigers and uh, giant Lions? eagles. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, like, as I'm running past, go, are any of you Vezineer by any chance? <laughs> are any of you? Are, are, you, are you? Are you? I, know, are you? <laughs> I, I saw him turn into a bear once and an eagle once. So maybe, I don't know. Just, just if, if you're not him, can you tell him to, like, Meet up with me real quick, and then I'll and, just keep running. <laughs> yeah, sure. And one of them, uh, one of them stops and and actually hears you like a like a bear that's fifteen feet tall and <laughs> stops the rest of your troops. And they're like, like pointing their stuff, and this, this bear is like, <laughs> and, and turns back and goes back into the building that he just broke out the wall of uh, to talk to Vess. <laughs> I feel like mumps would just be like, "Oh, the circus is in town. Great, um, or the zoo, or this is this is fantastic." I love the zoo. I didn't know this camp had a petting zoo. <laughs> Giant bear. Wouldn't have wasted my time playing cards so long. Vest, the prison building has become yours at this point. Um, the guards have been either killed or brought down by escaped prisoners and escaped druids. Uh, the druids have begun to assist you know breaking or getting through the locks using the key on the guard of the other the lesser prisons the pillar okay. people um so the pillar people are mostly free people are scattering it doesn't seem like mumps as you see prisoners like running nobody's prioritizing stopping them from doing that um and um, the only thing left, Vess, is the second story cage is still un untouched. Yeah, I definitely. As soon as like the first batch of druids is freed, um, he's definitely gonna fly up to the second floor and kind of focus on his freeing his his the queen. You know. Yeah. After all, that's that. And are you still eagle formed or do you? Um, I guess that there's no. I mean, I'm trying to figure out if I'm any more useful at picking locks in human form or in eagle form. Mm -hmm. Um, or not human form, what human form? Um, um, or if I should just try and like turn into a bear and smash it open or something yeah, like sure. that. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't have anything to uh, lock pick with. So as you reach up to this cave, this like weird platinum cave, uh, platinum bar cave, uh, your mother is going to 
she's so she's basically free in there um free to move around she's not bound like your other folks were she's going to like sprout a little bonsai tree looking thing right out of her hand yeah. and begin to twist the branches and make like this miniature little symbol of this plant stuff and you're recognizing this as basically uh uh druidic she's like yeah. speaking druidic to you through the wall because you can't oh, hear her voice cool. so she's yeah. like putting she's like growing this around the uh bars and different colors and whatnot and telling you the words as she's like mouthing it together and um she's saying that the cage is magic can't be broken one key exists belongs to the leader all right he'll be my target um i am i so now if it's not able so with my mold earth cantrip i'm able to cause shapes colors or both to appear on the dirt or stone spelling out words creating images shaping patterns i imagine he would try to cast it on the dirt inside of the cage but would that do anything you try but to no effect Okay, so he realizes this, decides to spell it out outside the cage where she can still see it, um, and just kind of, you know, uh, saying quick druidic, uh, like that, you know, he almost like a, I'm like, actually, I guess he wouldn't even say anything, I guess he would just nod, you know, he understands the mission and he, uh, mm -hmm. heads off. And she, like, fine. she, she was like, wait, 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 with her okay. hands. Oh, wait, she oh, wait. does it again and she says, um, so proud of you. Oh. Um, and then she's, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> she does it again. And it's like, have you been flossing? <laughs> Vestir goes from a proud embarrassment to just sighs and molds in the earth. Yes, mother, I have been flossing. <laughs> and mother. she just gives you like a look. She doesn't have to say anything, but just like, have you? Quickly, quickly erases mother and writes, I mean, my queen, uh, like erases the dirt and like fixes the, the writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant more that she doesn't believe you that you've been. Flossing. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? No, I, I think that's at first he would write. You know, yes, my queen, I'm flossing. And then she, she doubts him and goes, "Mother, like writes it." Sure, story. yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, where are you heading next? Um, so at this point, have I been given the message that Mumps has sent me, or am I still oblivious? Oh that? yeah, uh, you turn your back and there's a bear there. And he goes, <laughs> What was that message again, Mumps? <laughs> Mumps is looking for me. Just All right. To, yeah, you come find me over by the, by the uh, wall. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, but I have the intuition in, that. In uh, Barrett's, yeah, you, I yeah. think you would mostly communicate with each other in, in animal form a lot, right? So Yeah, definitely. He's saying. The just... little a little guy said to meet him by the burning wall or whatever. So that's just a sneaking suspicion that <laughs> I'm gonna go kill somebody. Right. Oh yeah. Great. 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 <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you. Um. You know, kind of just does a quick send off and uh, different, different, different than the single that he was giving. Uh, croak. By the way, totally it looks the same. I know, but it's totally different. Croak. And <laughs> yeah. Wait. No. Croak. He's fine. He's fine. Um. And uh, figures wherever, knowing mumps in the short time he's known mumps. I can't imagine he's because he's the kind of guy that attracts a lot of attention and uh, wherever he is oh yeah perhaps you that spot him he's still not far he's he's running towards the uh mumps is running past your building and towards the firewall uh towards the largest remaining crowd of guards uh who are trying to make it up some of them are scrambling up the steeper section uh occasionally slipping but some of them are making it towards the top getting struck by arrows now by 20 archers and even the Malay fighters who were up there, many of them carried bows as well. So the wall, the tower is occupied and firing back with force. It's hard now for the guards to hit them because they're using the cover of the of the tower itself. Okay. Um. So. So that's where the fighting is. Um. Mumps is heading that way, and. Uh, from behind you. I guess the two of you, um, you guys look, 
you hear a booming voice, but it's not coming from the megaphone anymore. It's just coming from Lex's voice, and the anger has made it louder, and he says, Little shit! That one! Eddie's pointing at Monks, and he says, You! How dare you! Um, and Ugly bitch says what? I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> and he says, Shh, and he draws out a rapier and he says, I challenge you for leadership of these goons that you've rallied to your side. Oh, this is going to be some kind of like one on one thing? Are you going to try and drag me like that? Because you don't have any friends? Is that what I'm hearing? You're gonna try and one-on-one me because you're scared of my friends? Yeah, tell him, Bobs. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to kill all of my workers before they have a chance oh, to workers? realize- workers? Not your friends? Because they're my friends. You call them workers? Everyone, did you hear that? Did you hear what he just called you? Yeah, we heard him. We heard him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're my workers that I pay to do a job. Barely. They're not my friends. And you're not their friends, leading them to what end? If we weren't friends, would Ed and I have this secret handshake? They do. They do a very cool secret handshake, <laughs> and we do a like a full on like twenty second long. <laughs> make a make a performance hand. check for me. Uh, secret handshake. Uh, Bezin, I feel like Bezin that's gonna coming up the rear and uh, <laughs> just quickly trying to. Oh, Vess, are you an eagle? Uh, no, I, I, I did transform, uh, okay, I guess, okay. I guess, well, no, I guess I have no reason to not have been in, I, I, you know what, no, I, I think you, I can't, yeah, can't, you yeah. were, I can't cast spells in, in eagle form, so, okay yeah. Let's say 21 on that performance roll. Okay, so more people have started to gather, um, oh, right now at the, uh, Havilar, you look down and you see this gathering of, uh, troops and, baddies uh and mumps and you see these animals <laughs> going wild um at this point the folks that are on that slope have sort of created a shield wall and are almost they're on the retreat down the hill uh trying their best to keep arrows away from them uh but the arrows continue to fire uh unless commanded otherwise um is there anything, any adjustment, Havilar, you want to make from up at the firewall? Can I see Lex? Yeah, I think you would see Lex sort of out now, Western style, in the mud. Uh, he's got his two uh, metal cronies behind him. And on the other side is Mumps surrounded by <laughs> uh, about 20 or 30 uh, guards and builders who are shouting things and turning the heads of some of the soldiers that are on the the stairs uh, getting shot at, just not, just trying to figure out what's going on at the same time. But I can see the, the soldiers surrounding Mumps don't appear to Yeah, be no, there's a him. secret he, handshake in progress right, right now. Right, I see the handshake. Hmm, yeah. very interesting. Yes, yes. And it's um, a good I want to direct some of the archers. Can they reach Lex? Ooh. I think they can. That thing, those longbows are are fucking crazy, man. Uh, yeah. So they'll have disadvantage, but you're firing with twenty with twenty longbows. Uh, yeah, they can reach that target. Let's do that. Because they can reach six hundred feet. Let's shoot at Lex and the two cronies. Okay, I direct so you... them to do that. You get everybody to to draw their streak, to draw their bows, and vest. The reinforcements see... are backing up, right? They're yeah, they seem to be. And... Yeah, yeah. Um, and vest, you you come out to see all this this same sight uh, occurring. You you catch like the the second half of the secret handshake. Uh, you see the leader over there. <laughs> Most importantly, um, anything you want to do, as you all, I guess you would also catch a glimpse of Havilar, like redirecting and pointing uh, at, with your troops, um, Havilar's troops. Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna head towards the leader. Um, 
if I am in my elf form and not my eagle form, I guess I'll I'll just head over there anyway. Um, but <clears throat> when I get over there, I'm definitely going to transform. I think what I can do is on my way over there, um, I think I'm going to use a dash action, and as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Guardian of Nature. Um, and you see that my elven features become more animalistic. I'm not transforming into any animal, not quite yet, but um, my facial features become feral, fur begins to cover my body, and um, my walking speed increases by 10. I gain, I make advantage with strength-based attack rolls and melee weapon attacks deal extra damage. So I just become basically more beastly as okay. I'm running. Okay, so um, Vestinir steps out of the prison building. There's dead guards strewn about um and the animals i feel like are also perched following vestinir's lead for the most part so almost on the same side as mumps now as uh lex staring down with his two cronies which are looking smaller and smaller compared to the massing army <laughs> down the road and lex sees vest take the lead of that growing more ferocious uh, as he approaches, and Lex takes his rapier out again, and he's uh, and his eyes brighten and widen and get red, and his cronies take a couple steps back, and he points it at you, Vess, and he's gonna take a few steps towards you, and then an arrow ting hits into his uh, plate mill buddy, and another one ting hits into the other guy, and these arrows just start to rain down, and. Uh, 20 arrows come through so let's say hell yes i guess i should have asked how far away i am from that whole scene yeah so you <laughs> you were pretty close you were basically in the middle of the two sides so you were when you come out you're closer than the rest of them so slightly. would i be like within 40 feet uh almost yeah yeah you're about to be Okay, because I'm trying to figure out if I should use a dash or if I should just attack, knowing how how best in your knowing how close he is and Sean not knowing. Right, right, right. Um, you're saying you want to do that before some arrows hit him. Um. As as the arrows are in air on their way to the target. Um. Or... <laughs> sorry, I, I guess it was my. Uh... Yeah. But you're so, not going to beat the arrows to the guys, is what I'm saying. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, no, okay. I'm not. Good. We're good. All right. Sorry. So, no, thank you. So, um, so all of a sudden Lex – oh, here, let me put a picture of Lex on the screen. Oh, this yeah. Is, I've had this cool sprite on it too long. Okay. Mr. Highmore. He's got his eyes. Now they actually are glowing red, Ooh. and he's pointing his rapier at you. Vess just transferring all the anger he has at Mumps, and he says, one of the elf savages. And as he does so, he's struck in the shoulder and again in the arm, and his two friends are struck, and he's hit um, many, many times by these arrows. Uh, Havilar, let's have you roll. Let's, <laughs> let's have each of you roll. I don't know. I feel like that's too much time. There's a lot of rolling about to happen. So I'll just roll these. You the one who cuts down trees and you call me a savage? Who are the real savages here? Yeah, so let me get this guy a down. mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Savages, savages, barely even. And Vest doesn't slow his approach as no. the arrows are hit striking his enemy either. Just kind of just a couple feet above your head, Vest striking into him. He's like, ah, and he's taken. Uh, 12 arrows into his chest and arms and he's still standing he drops to a knee and he stands back up and he raises his rapier now to stab at you Vess but you're going to get the first move because he's slowed by the fact that he has he's a pin cushion all right i'm going to um use produ uh, produce flame um as i'm as i'm doing this uh i'm going to transform next next round because i can do that as a bonus action um like a ranged spell attack. Okay, there we go. Okay. So that is going to be 11 plus 8. Ah, 19. Awesome. Okay. Definitely a hit. All right. And then and that's a D8 of damage. And or no, can... I'm 11th level, so it does 3D8 of damage. Okay. So the fire... 
Yeah, I, I haven't decided. We're in the middle of a uh, of a thing. It's cool right now. It's getting warm in my in my house right now. All right, six plus five plus three. You guys can't see it, but 14. I basically have my shirt like a belly shirt right now, and I'm just no. it's I getting a little bit same higher. Thing twinsy. <laughs> by, the end, by the end, it'll be visible. It'll be up here around my neck. <laughs> it's like vest in your shirt. shirt. I was about to say like vest in your shirt, yeah, <laughs> but in reverse. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 14 damage with the produced flame. Okay. And so you're just hurling this fireball at this dude's uh, yeah. head area? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So the arrows have all hit him. He's staggering. He, he raises his um, rapier, and you deal 12 damage. <laughs> fireball to his face. And he uh, falls backwards with the impact. Yes. Uh, arrows bunch standing up on his chest. Um what next he doesn't seem very mobile <laughs> does he seem um, very dead i think he, with the, he's... between the movement and then the bonus action of the guardian nature and then the fire and uh, then the produce flame yeah I'm, that's that's my turn well we're out of basically we're out of turn oh well then in that case he's gonna transform into a uh giant constrictor snake you see the um the bones around his neck kind of stretch and extend and sure. Jafar transforms into Jafar, a, a giant yeah. constrictor snake although like less red and more <laughs> Like, yeah. Like a greenish, and uh, brownish Lex snake. is on his back and starting to like roll his head to see what's coming. And uh, giant constrictor snake. How giant is a giant constrictor snake? It is huge. It's huge, huge. Fifteen by fifteen. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's huge, huge. Um, yeah. I don't think that means he's 15 feet, like literally wide, but his body right. takes up the, that space. Takes up that much space, yeah. Um, so, like the basilisk, like I'm picturing Harry Potter's basilisk almost, right? Yeah. Uh, approach and you approach Lex, who's on the ground as mm -hmm. this giant snake. Yeah, and I'm going to um, constrict, and since that is a melee attack, I get advantage due yeah. to my beastly form. And That's going to be. Yeah. And because he's prone. Okay. 25 yeah. and 20, 25. Okay. Are you trying to kill him? All right. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to constrict him so I can do damage as well as grap as well as restrain him. Yeah, he's tied up for sure. All right. And so um, if you want to, his head's about to pop off. So it's it's whatever you want to do at this point. All right. Lex so, yeah, is at um, zero HP. Okay. So um. Yeah. He he uh, does eight damage. Wraps around him. Sure. And you, you, you complete, completely covers um, Lex. You can't see him. And then as you see Vesanir constrict, you hear the crunching of bones, and um, you see his hands go, go limp. You're an animal. animal. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, yeah, he dies. And that's what makes me better than you on the on on uh, on, on unravels from him. And the two um, plate mail dudes, they took enough arrows as well to they're on the ground uh, dead as well. Um, everybody's very quiet. Um, Mumps, your people are like looking to you for for guidance. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, your everybody! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And your twelve people probably cheer, and uh, <laughs> everybody else, uh, like, is just looking at each other. Yeah, everybody, and, like, give yourselves a big round clapping. of applause. This I kind of glare great. at the people who don't stuff. cheer. Like, a few people are crying out in pain as as their legs have been bitten off by druids, and <laughs> but uh, the battle amazing. seems to be over. Um, the guards who were getting shot at are going to try and just just run back down the hill and just run for the other side of the camp. Um, unless they're Vesemir stopped. holds back his urge, his animalistic urge to, to chase after prey and instead is going to go for the key that is keeping his mother prison. Sure. Um, yeah, so you do find a key on uh, in Lex's pockets. I don't know if you have to I don't know if you can get to those with snake. No, if, if the battle's games. over, I'll, I'll, I'll untransform and 
Sure. You know, his eyes take a moment to transform back from from vertical to to you know horizontal you know, yeah. horizontal blinking. <laughs> you find this key in a breast pocket of Lex. Um, when Lex's head tinked under the ground, you it was it was a tink. It wasn't like a splat like it normally would have been. It was mm. uh, a bit of his. He's got those metal sort of casings on either side, and it seemed like there's something heavy in there. It is um, in his head. In his head. Have a little heavy head. ripping that's off heads. See if there's anything in his head. Yeah, that's near's not on on a on a on a on opposed to uh decide decide dis dissecting. Dis dissecting. Thank you, a body. <laughs> All right, uh, Vestinir, the key uh, works on the cage. You unlock, and your mother, whose name do you remember? I have to look it up. I forgot it. What? Why would I forget my own mother's name? What? <laughs> I would never do something. That. It's gonna be right here. <laughs> uh, oh, did we ever come up with a name for her? No. Okay. Did we not? Oh, oh and yeah, yeah, Veranthus. Veranthus. Okay. Yes, my mother, Veranthus, of course. But I would never ever refer to her as that. The eldest. She's either mother That's true. Or my you, queen. People or, forget yeah. their mom's oh, names all the time. They the just say yeah. mom. Yeah. But my mom's not a person. She's this amazing. Uh, she's she's this um, authority figure that I will never be able to exactly. surmount. And... Exactly. <laughs> Veranthus comes out and says, uh, "Is everybody safe?" He responds, um, "As safe as what as as safe as a people can be in wartime." Hmm. So, kind of saying like, there's some injured, but you know. We've we've taken care of things. Let's see, I'll see to our people. I guess oh, I and, and, and back to... thank you. You did well. You uh, he kind of turns away. You need not thank me for uh, for what for what is my duty and uh, gets gets out of there used in his beastly form before uh, <laughs> he gets more embarrassed. Okay, bumps. Uh... To mumps and Havilar. You've exchanged numbers with a lot of the guards uh, who were yeah. like, keep in well, touch, you know, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is my sending stone number. Uh, so what do you guys want to do about, oh, also, does anybody need to take a break? Because it's been a long time. <laughs> just a little bit. Break. Yeah, just a, yeah. Just a little bitty one. Let's do a quick break right now. Let's say a we'll... short rest. We'll do a 15 or we'll come back and, and we'll do 8 to 8.30. All right. All right. So everybody in the chat, thank you for watching um, the, the down bringing of Highmore Camp. And uh, we'll be right back in 15 for minutes more awesome for the conclusion. The action. Stick around. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> All right. Boom.
because they tried to challenge someone like, and like we're a live. big boss. Like a big boss who just appears in the beginning <laughs> to like oh, set up, oh, they're the bad boss. We're going to get there at the end. Like yeah. tries to face them right at the start. <laughs> I'm like, we're level like three. Are you kidding it's me? Worth a shot. <laughs> what are you doing? All right. Uh, we are back. Welcome to Roll For It, uh, mm -hmm. the second half, which is only half an hour long. But thank you for sticking around for the epic conclusion of the episode. Um, I want to share the right thing here. Default. There it is. Wow. Our schedule hasn't been on screen for a while. So I just want to say anybody who's still uh, viewing, stuck with us through the break, please give us a follow if you haven't already. Um, drop by in the comments sometimes. Oh, check out the rest of our show on our podcast so you can see the origin story of the Mumps and Havilar and Veilette thing and how that has evolved into this and also the other seasons too because after these guys finish this adventure which right now is scheduled to take place on february 7th i believe it was it might be the 6th or the 8th um uh, the next season seven, comes in yeah. to take the torch uh that season three is next so that's mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta catch up um so anyways give us a listen if you haven't uh it's pretty good it's good it's good shit it's good stuff uh, it's fun, and Quality thank you for videos. being here. It's good sound effects. Oh, yeah. I need to... I always... When I re-listen, I'm always like... Because I got better at doing the thing as we went. <laughs> like, the actual editing and the actual mixing. So I'm always like, oh, man, I wish that was three decibels quieter or whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I gotta not do that because I'll just never... I'll never be happy. Can't it's ever just, be perfect. Yeah. Um. Anyways, everything is exactly the perfect amount of decibels, so go listen to that show, and mm -hmm. it's really great. And now, we can resume our game if you guys are ready. Yeah. So, so most of the guards, most of the builders, scramble to gather their very modest amount of belongings and escape the camp before they're looked at twice by... Well, the invaders, the moonsiders. Um, Mumps, you, you have a band of followers who've stuck with you, and they continue to uh, just kind of like looking around and and even like helping people who have been injured on both sides, uh, and doing whatever they can to kind of help. What are you guys doing in this in this post battle chaos? Well, are there any more? Got or is anyone? left on the um wall uh just what? you and a few of the moonsiders but the fire is also uh spreading from that section so the yeah. fire has so almost I... reached the towers themselves mm -hmm. there's not much safe yes. space left i will leave i will leave the burning tower along with Ed, the rest of the men sure and folks sure the firewall uh begins to crumble little by little it, it takes a while but fire goes up and there's a pillar of smoke in the air can i like assemble the guards maybe like the remaining few whoever were there from the beginning like... vestinir watches the, the wall collapse while watching proudly as nature reclaims civilization once more mm -hmm. when i have those guards like assembled i'm gonna be like all right, guys. Thanks, thanks for sticking with me. But um, my friends and I, we got a job to do. We have a bigger mission here. This was just one stop of many, and we we gotta go through that portal. And um, you know, I'm gonna be sad to see it go. But I hope you can all you can all find new lives here. In fact, I don't know if you'd maybe you'd be interested. There's there's uh some some weird stuff going on on the other side of the portal. People are gonna keep coming through. Like maybe you should set up like. A real outpost, like maybe put up like a little, little saloon over there, or a little, little B and B over there, or something like help people through. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be coming into a strange land with coming off some weird vibes. Like help them down, you know, like put up a real town, do something, do something real here. And um, and you're gonna hear a voice over your shoulder, mumps, uh, that says, "That's an excellent idea." And it's uh, Vess's mother, the queen of the Moonsiders. And uh, she, like, looks at the guards and she looks at you and the guards are like, 
look, uh, Mumps, Mumps turned us on to some real bad shit that we've been doing. And, uh, we were just following orders, but we, but we, we did bad stuff. We didn't, we didn't help. And I'm just, we were just with all this that's going on and Mumps, I think you said it, man, uh, buddy, friend, uh, yeah. Is there any way that we could help? Well, yeah, I think you gotta turn right? this. You gotta turn this frown of a town upside down, you know. <laughs> and I'm sure. I mean, hey, you can always rebuild using what's his face's money. Look at that big house. There's gotta be tons of stuff in there, like tons of money and like maybe stuff you can sell for money. A TV like... gets thrown out the window of that house under the. <laughs> yeah, like oh, there's probably like a gold-plated toilet in there or something you can sell to like build this town. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that, that seems like that's going to be the course of action. Uh, Vassanir, Havilar, uh, that conversation continues. Well, and did, it's also, um, it's sunset at this point, by the way. So as the, uh, as the fire up above sort of turns into this blaring bonfire, uh, putting smoke out of the sky, uh, it's about sunset and, a glow, an orange and purple glow is sort of covering over the sky and over the camp. Much like uh, we see the sun, the sunrise as the beginning of a new day or, you know, kind of the rise of uh, victory once more, uh, Vesnir and his people see the moon in a similar way. So as, uh, as he begins to see, you know, the, uh, the moon in the sky yeah. once more, uh, he kind of sees it feels appropriate. It feels right that, uh, starting off and starting new and hope for his people is rising as the moon does. Yeah. So did anybody, and I have not witnessed this because I was still up in the tower, but now I've walked up and I have discussed a little with mumps what happened. Ah, yes, you had a troop of people follow you <laughs> once again. You've managed to talk your way out of danger. Um, the the metal clunk of Lex's head. <laughs> Do we want to investigate? I want to investigate that. Can I say the sure. mumps told me about that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Right. Should I probably roll heard the clink echo up at the up at the firewall. <laughs> hmm, that's not how a how, a head falling off a body usually sounds. <laughs> I am very well. I would aware. recognize that sound anywhere. So a perception because my investigation sucks or it's okay. I'll just roll an investigation and then if it doesn't work because no, either, it's a natural one, way. it's a natural <laughs> one. It's, I'm going opposite ends for this game. Um, to be or not to be, you say as you... Uh, anyways, you're going to need to smash this thing a little to bit. find anything. Let yeah. Nobla to suffer the slings and arrows of Havilar. Havilar, snap out of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I took a drama class. What can I say? <laughs> um, One of your leisure days. Yeah, this so, seems very unnatural. I don't uh, don't like this yeah. at all. Best. Yeah. Did, would you like to investigate before I smash it to smithereens, or I can just get on with the smashing? Yeah, I'd like to examine the um, like, you know the. You know, in sure. terms of like the biology, like you know, if there's metal, and, how it's connected, and like you know, what you guys that. can each make a, a a nature or an arcana or hmm, yeah, either one of those. Yeah, I'll do nature. Nature sounds good. Ha! <sighs> That's a nine. Mm, this is very strange to Vesnir indeed. Unnatural. It's unnatural. This unnatural. should probably be smashed. Yeah, this needs to do an end with. Yeah. What does Asara think? <laughs> it seems like you'll have more answers once it's smashed. Yeah, I agree. Right, I'm gonna smash it. Thing. Okay. I'm so, gonna uh, as Havilar smashes the severed head uh, mm -hmm. repeatedly into the ground and other workstation areas uh, to try and get to the bottom of it, mm -hmm. um, Vess, your mother pulls you aside. <laughs> Wait, mother, I want to see the head being smashed. I mean, yes, mother. <laughs> I mean, yes, my queen. Wait. <laughs> Candy's gonna come out. Uh, I'm looking yes, for Veranthus. And Veranthus <laughs> says, um, So the Valinaires sent two to aid us. 
Is there anything else, any news from them at the castle? Mother, I will say they, they did send their best. Um, but no, it seems and looking that they around, regard us I, the I, I, I agree. And I'm sorry to <laughs> imply any otherwise, but still. No, it seems the other Valinaires regard us in the same way they have, uh, as, as they have been. Uh, much to my, uh, much to dismay of many. But, um, none, nonetheless, Vaylet has sent her trusted, and I, uh, after fighting with them for this long, I understand why she holds them so close. I want to ask you, as the future leader of our people, begins to kind of sweat a bit and panic. <laughs> what do you think about our next move? Because many of us have discussed the possibility of taking up Silverlight you as mean, our temporary home. You mean staying here? Staying here behind these walls after we give them a much needed druidic makeover. <laughs> Dude, that, that's definitely that. But but surely we must we must go back and take back what is our home that has been taken from us and Surely if that can must. be done then we can move again but right now I see a need for people escaping the Feywild to, to find safety when they come out of the portal and our people are some that can provide the safety something familiar something looks, he, of the Fey yeah he looks back at the camp and kind of remembers the conditions that the people were kept in, that his people were kept in, what they're doing to all of those trees. Oh, those, oh so many trees being cut down. Um, yeah, he, he nods and says, yes, it seems we would be one of the few who would understand how to treat this place the way it should. And your and friend Mumps has convinced the humans to aid us in this cause. He has quite the gift of gab, I must admit. Says it kind of incredulously. <laughs> plus, plus five gab, even. <laughs> um, so what would your decision be on that? I agree we should have some sort of outpost here at least we can we can gain back our strength and perhaps with allies take back our home in the near future but as of now focus our attention here and this, this mission into the fey i do not think that it has to be halted i think that it can proceed as planned with at least a scouting mission, if nothing else. He uh, kind of uh, turns a mischievous kind of smart smirk up at that. He does love his espionage <laughs> missions. We don't even know what's in there. Whatever the curse is, there must be some kind of way to actually find out what's happening. And if we know the problem, if we don't know the problem, we can't solve it. I see, so you haven't been able to... F None so, of us uh, remember. Nobody that comes out of the portal remembers just hmm. what we're all running from, even though we can still see and remember the faces of our loved ones falling to the danger. Has the head been smashed? The head has been smashed <laughs> inside. Yeah! Inside you see that um, old Lex's head he has got some like gold, uh, and it's not solid. It's not pure gold, or it would have smashed open. So like a harder gold alloy type of thing, holding certain parts of his brain in certain places. Basically, he's got some magical brain implants uh, that, at bare minimum, is uh, probably valuable for the. Uh, mineral value of these items but is this if that you... stuff that you guys value so much this shiny yellow stuff ah, it is. yeah that, that must dig. go for some pretty pretty pennies around here oh i must say that is quite vile um, says his mother and elvish savages <laughs> you after consulting with uh 
everybody um uh, basically this is some kind of an enchantment the metal is enchanted to protect the wielder or there's no way that somebody could wear this or take this out without like surgically doing some this is a permanent implant uh but that it protected the wielder's mind from influence oh Okay. Oh, Mumps very is very cool. powerless in this scenario. Hey, what? what? I did I mean, a I'm lot today. Saying, I did a lot today. Did, I no, just in this one little. I'm just saying, like that would have been something you would have tried, brain. and like I don't know how. But it, I think Mumps was quite useful today. I wouldn't. No, say he was that. useful. I'm not saying he wasn't useful. Mumps, does he treat you like this all the time? Yeah, Havilar, I let you kill him as a point about friendship and everything. I could have taken him one on one if like I wanted to. Like, let's not let's you not couldn't. beat around the bush here. <laughs> I... You absolutely. I. I am um, my sincerest apologies, my friend. Of course, you couldn't like, take. You've seen me stab a yeti in the butthole. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> I've seen you do wondrous things, mumps. <laughs> Indeed. That I can among fight. Them. I can wrestle. I can tumble with the best of them. Come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> mumps turns the corner to see Havilar splitting this dude's uh, skull in half, <laughs> pulling out some jewels. Um. <laughs> So, so you guys, uh, the with the sunset, a another fire, like a smaller, more tame fire, has been. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe we would just kind of feast around the actual battle fire at this at the top of the hill, mm -hmm. where they well, won their definitely. victory. Definitely, yeah. The, um, it's the, it's the Moonsider way. We we invite the scene death in Georgia the our... jungle. Yeah. Where they dance yeah. around the fire. Do, do, You've seen do, that movie. Do, 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 I've been waiting do, for you do, all do, my life. Do, 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 do. We're doing that. It's one of Kelsey's or, favorite again, songs. Again, one of those, one of the other songs of my people. This is uh, this is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so everybody um, basically has a little celebratory feast as this is happening. Vesnir takes out his flute. Awesome. And Veranthus asked for your staff, Vesnir. To let me borrow this for a moment. Yeah, kneels down and presents it very formally to her. <laughs> she's, totally she's on like, that. Okay. <laughs> so she goes over. <laughs> she stands on uh, the tower, one of the towers near the gate uh, with this staff, um, and she concentrates. She, she plants it on the tip of the tower um, platform, and she concentrates. And as she does, you guys see the many trees basically that have been chopped down and make up this fence wall they start to sprout moss or little leaves and the spiked tops of the spiked tips of each of these little trees start to grow and blossom and twist with one another uh, basically adding a couple of feet to the top of this wall but also making everything green and and spilling leaf cover over both sides of the walls and the tower themselves the towers themselves every 40 feet or so are going to grow taller and taller and the gap in the middle becomes this tree branch covered little gap section and from the top a wide um canopy of leaves as we're now just in within a matter of probably 10 minutes it takes for uh, the queen of the moonsiders to right in the full view of the moonlight um, raise up these trees that form this new elvish wall around this camp. Uh, as... Vestinir takes a big deep breath of, of relief and, and kind of looks around at the trees as if they're old friends and kind of puts a hand on one and, you know, closes his eyes and, it's kind of feels like mm -hmm. way more at ease now. And the reflection of the moon, I'd say it's probably about uh it's approaching half moon territory. It's like the fingernail. Oh, so close. Um you can see it in the uh reflection is visible in the lake, even through the mist that's like forming right over it. Um You guys also notice the Vestineer's um moon sickle kind of is glowing a little more than it would normally as a reflection. Uh, it kind of sounds, it's almost like it's emitting its own light. Yeah. Um, and the party continues. Uh, 
And so in the morning, the discussion is that if you guys are still willing, you'll venture through the portal and clear out the former home or at least find out what's going around and figure out how to get the word out or fix it. Just maybe take a long rest. Yes, a this long rest time. indeed. All right. Yep. But it's so, so but we it was the night, so this is the morning now. This so is still night. This rest? is still this is still oh. a part of Oh, oh okay. I see. I, I yeah. see. Okay, okay, okay. We'll take a long rest. Okay. And then I would like to use clairvoyance if possible to see what is beyond the portal before Ooh. we go through it. Okay. Got you. So an ancestral barbarian ability and clairvoyance that puts a sensor like within a certain space. Is that how yes. that works? Uh, so anybody on the other side will see a glowing orb. Um, and I create, let's see, you uh, an invisible sensor within range in a location familiar to you or that's obvious, but I'm familiar. So, you know, a door, mm. but I don't know what's on, on the other side P portal in this case. Um, the sensor remains in place for the duration and it can't be attacked or otherwise interacted with okay and i All can right. choose to see or hear what's on the other side and i can switch between them okay gotcha as an action all right so um the humans built this sort of dock into the center of the lake uh, so are you are you going to try and do this in the morning or in the evening before sleepy time? I think, uh, I think in the morning before we go. Okay. Like rest tonight and we all get up refreshed in the morning and then we like go over and it's like the three of us looking down <laughs> at the lake. Sure. So the party's all together um, and Havilar, you kneel down and you feel, the three of you feel the cool air and the mist rising up from the portal or from the lake itself. And Havilar, you're going to concentrate and try and place a portal on the other side of the center of this lake. Um, and yeah, I wanna say you don't see, the two of you don't see the portal appear, uh, Mumps and Vesenir. And Havilar, the, the orb? yeah, you don't the see sensor? the orb appear. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, Havilar, are you listening right now? I don't. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it before. <laughs> this is. It's not like her to be like so wild. We so. just gotta believe in it. Yeah, her. I'm very. You know, she's, she must be doing something after all. Um, very still and Are you and listening quiet. or are you looking? I'm trying to see first. Okay. So you see um, you see the surface of a lake much like this one, but upside down. Um, so beneath you is the sky with the sun rising on the opposite side. And above you, the lake continues overhead and reflects the same thing. You see the familiar trees of this region and they're mixed even more so with the trees the wild and glowing trees of the Feywild that you it's been over a year since you've been back in that area you also see after it takes a little while for everything to swirl into focus and it's completely silent or I guess it's not silent I think you can still hear like mumps humming uh, <laughs> nearby you <laughs> Mumps is just really nervous when Havilar gets really still and quiet, so Mom, he's gotta stop coming. You're distracting hum it out. <laughs> and you guys, as as Havilar is doing this, you guys see that um, the areas beneath her scales are get, emitting this faint light blue glow, uh, especially more so towards her chest and and torso. Um, and as you that. look, Havilar. No, you see... Vesmir, I don't look at my friend's chests like that. <laughs> Come on. Keep it together. 
I'm not sure what's 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 wrong with looking at someone's chest. I don't understand what you're referring okay. to. Okay. Poor Vess. I see how it goes. Okay. And how about hearing this perfectly? Um, so you see strange blurriness moving by in the tree line occasionally uh, that you can't make out. Uh, moments of darkness. You see a figure coming towards you that looks distorted completely somehow obscured by some kind of veil it's coming towards me like do i feel like it's nose it, it, well it, it can see you the can't orb. you can't tell i don't want to say you can tell where it's facing just but the direction is towards you at first but veers off moves past before, it's beginning to move past you yeah before it moves away can i switch to hearing sure you switch to hearing, and you hear... Ooh. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Suddenly, yeah, cause right now, suddenly your eyes... So your eyes are closed, so it switches to blackness, and you just hear... Screaming. Um, a cacophony of sc inhuman screaming from all directions uh, and and through that you hear a voice start to grow louder and louder and the voice is saying Avalar this is not the way You will not survive this journey without me. And the screaming is is dulling, but it's still there. You feel as though your your attention is somehow being pulled elsewhere by this voice. So like I, I can hear the screaming, but in a way it's like distant because yeah. of this voice. The yeah, screaming yeah. is almost being phased out. I am the one you carry within you. A part of my soul carried on in your life. Your draconic spirit comes from me. I can feel you there. Havilar, you fought well on your own. But it's time now for you to take the power that you have earned. And only with it will you be able to face what awaits you in the Fey. A piece of my soul lives within you, Avalar. But another piece lives within a weapon. One that you will need to destroy the evil. Switch to your vision now, Avalar. I will show you oh. the way. And I switch. Oh, this is really informative. Yeah. You switch and you see um, an outline half spherical outline of lettering and symbols uh, like it resembles the elven gate in the fellowship of the ring um, mm. glowing symbols and otherwise blackness you don't see the Feywild that you used to see and these symbols and numbers and letters uh, draconic much of it but also a lot of it elven that you recognize are sort of etched into your memory you you know this to be a portal, uh, the coordinates of a portal. Ooh. And as you look now, because you can't hear, all of a sudden you're just hearing Mumps and Vess and you're arguing about your chest. <laughs> <laughs> as you look, um, you see that through the portal lies 
you zoom your way through it lies a glaive a long um fancy looking glaive which is almost like an axe on the end of a spear um Mm -hmm. and the other end of that glaive a dragon is adorned on it with its wings out just a an ornament at the end of the hilt and the glaive it's it appears the blade appears to be frozen little frosty uh what's that called steam uh, the opposite of steam uh rises and floats away from it and this pillar of light and then it turns to black and then slowly the blackness turns back into the Feywild and you're back to outside just seeing these obscured shapes wait I'm back to outside like back into regular regular time you're still looking through into the Feywild yeah it seems like you're back into the normal world right now Mm mm-hmm with your vision can't see anything else can i switch back to hearing to like check one last time yeah there's okay i switch back to hearing i'm glad you switched back to hearing (laughs) there's more to be said promise you'll seek out the weapon or the soul that's within you will die with your body when you see when you search into the fey you won't survive. Well, I can't talk to this thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I say in my head to myself. Okay. Um, That's it. I will watch over you. Together. We can take over and defeat what threatens the world beyond this portal. But first, you must seek out the weapon at the portal you've seen. Use the tower. Mm -hmm. And just the voice goes silent. Do I hear anything else? I'm gonna wait. Voice goes silent. Okay. All right, I I come out of the trance. I mean, really, Mumps, this sounds like your people's issue. I really don't understand what this this hang up is. I really don't understand. Okay, well, you don't have to understand. It's just like not do it, like. Okay. <laughs> but not do what? I don't exactly understand what it is that I am doing. Just stop staring. There's... Stop stop staring. Get your eyes off. <laughs> She's coming out of it, so just stop staring. She's gonna notice. <laughs> And I put my hand on either of them, and I say, there's been a change of plans. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll Woo! find out what happens next week. <laughs> or not next week. Next week we have um, – this group is not doing it next week, so whoever's viewing right now, we have a surprise something or other planned for next week, the 31st, Tuesday night. We haven't exactly decided what it's going to be. But on the 7th, this party will be back to finish, probably to conclude uh, their adventure um, and see what the heck Havilar's, uh, what, what, whatsoever is talking about. And oh. again, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you so much to Sean, Kyle, and Amy for playing with us today. I uh, hope you guys had a good time. I had a blast. Yeah. Well done. I'm glad everybody got to do their thing today. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Kyle was like, let's just start a revolution. Amy's like, I'm going to tear as many people apart as I can. Yeah. And I got Sean to turn got into to a turn into. Snake. Yeah. Yep. I have to say, I love when Vess changes into different animals. It's my Absolutely. favorite. I respect him so much more when I remember <laughs> that he can do that. Yeah. It's, yeah, always, it's always hard when your rival's actually competent, then you're like, ugh. I know. And then you're, like, admiring. It's like a Legolas Gimli situation. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Three already. 